in Liberia, November 1944. A public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. Oh man, what, what are you doing here? I can't sell. You selling? What are you selling? I sell it trousers. I see, I see your car. I see this car in your hand. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very much disappointing in the whole part there. Uh, uh, and our person also. What? For the moment, I'm no more a civilian. I remember independent candidate now. But why you get the, the card? I mean, I see your, you know, from my, I see this guy. Is, I see this Adika. Yes. All right. But uh, 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 tell me, uh, why, why are you disappointed in the president? Why you say disappointed? You no, you no longer a civilian. Yeah, the president take our country to be to be a joke of country. Like how? Leave our country. Everything hard. People not taking pay. They have the money. Care for that. Go spot it. But the man said he negotiating. Yesterday he was able to speak to you know. Uh, some of the government officials of Qatar and they're thinking about how they can, you know, add something on, on local country rule. Yes, so they are living every day on Carrasco in post. They are in post. They are on every ticket in, in Quadra to watch football game. And, and I don't think Carrasco can look at it. Um, money, um, personal money in post. They are on our country money in sporting. So what's your own advice here? Because you are a sedition and I see your, your ID card. What's your advice to the president? You stay your president. My advice to the president is if you, if you stay strong for 20 to the because we are going there, we will need to take him from there. Yeah, if you stay, if you stay strong. So, when I'm here, I'm going to be able to support you soon. And stay there. All right, thanks for talking. So, it's for friend of the person of Christ coming on. The person of Christ will come to Liberia, will give you the, 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 the appropriate thing. Uh, so, the president of France visit, um, means a lot to this administration. Uh, it seems like when people say the president travel all day when they can't come. <laughs> what, is the, what is the purpose of Macron's visit? Which reason? I'm going to come to the country. I mean, oh, she, the country. Because, you know, to gas it. I know, hey, Macron can it. But you want to visit the in the papers today. Uh, it's in the papers. Uh, uh, Macron is coming. The uh, French president uh, is coming. The paper wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, I can't predict the future. He could come to Liberia one day. Okay. Uh, but but, the but, like, but, but there's no visit plan. Right? Oh, the so the so the the all the people are telling for a call me. Say, oh, is it true that the president of France is coming in December? I'm going to call you. No, but sorry. No, no, no. Don't tell me what I'm going to say. You say anything. No, but I'm going to say that. Every day, the president of France is coming to Liberia. We're now saying. Okay. Okay. You have answered that. 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 The only way to make this economy fair, the only way to make our democracy stronger is if we fight for it. You can't take it for granted. And that starts with electing people who know you, who see you, who care about you, who can walk in your shoes and, and see through your eyes and, and know what it's like to struggle, know what it's like to get sick, know what it's like to, to have to pay off student loans. Know what it's like when things aren't just handed to you, but you got to work for them. That's what you did two years ago when you sent Joe Biden to the White House. He knows you. He's been there. He's fighting for you every day, doing everything he can to put more money in your pocket, to make streets safer, to bring more good paying jobs here to Pennsylvania. That's why I said some time ago, never send a boy to do a man's job. Anybody who know the history of Liberia, you can't play with rights. That's why I said some time ago, never send a boy to do a man's job. 
Anybody who knows the history of Liberia, you can't play with rights. That's why I said some time ago, never send a boy to do a man's job. Anybody who knows the history of Liberia, it's all in the game. It's all in the game. Here, there, and everywhere. The people keep on crying. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, guys. Mo Ali, um, Pia, Pastor Mo, it's good to have you all here today on uh, on Wednesday. This is the midweek edition of the uh, of the class reloaded. Um, we are four more four more days to Christmas, um, and and and. After Christmas, we're talking about um, six more days to 2023, and and this is um, this has been one of a you know one of the most interesting years of all. You know, we've seen a lot. We've seen the president take take um, a pilgrimage, um, went to went 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 in the wilderness for for forty for forty eight days, uh, forty eight days and forty eight nights. Uh, we're seeing the president behave like a predicate son, all happening in 2022. We've seen um, McGill, Bill Trowey, and um, Serena Seifers all sanctioned for public corruption. We've seen um, somebody at the court authority making a 60-year-old 60, a 60 man to knee down because he tried to correct off. We've seen a lot. Uh, we've seen a lot. If you were writing the book about 2022, it will be way bigger than the U.S. budget, way voluminous. And, and let me say thanks to everybody for joining us. Hopefully, um, we can get Dwalu joining us um, later on in the program. Um, but until then, uh, we have here with us, as usual, our our panelists, um, Mohamed Ali, um, Jerry Limnick, Matthew Pia, and of course, uh, Pastor Mo joining us um, from, from different places here in the U.S. and across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, let me say welcome to all of our listeners uh, following us uh, via radio and online. And if you if you're following us um, on the chat, just say I'm present so that I can recognize you. You know, just say present so that I can know you're in class and and, and recognize you. Um, um, I see um, uh, Vita Pibari. I see Quita Dolo, Yonga Topa, um, Tom S. Benson, Alice Daniel. Magnus Popper, or Benjamin Caranda. Um, I see Blimboy Marsh, Blimboy Marsh, um, Sharif. I see George Shelton, Unbreakable Hour, Histin Lodge, Stanley Dwyer, Jusulin Petiqua. Um, I see Jenny Jala Phillips, Grace Faconia, Livato Sharif, uh, Pablo Ama, A. Dukle, Guaca Hina, Tom Benson. I see um, Winnie Setua, uh, Abo Siodo, Igwe Schiff, um, Peter Kekula, Mema Jones, um, Lawrence Tamba, Alia Delani, uh, Randall Nene, Gamer Roberts, um, Roland Teme, Fanning, Judith Afre, Saul, Mika Daniels, my brother, 
Molucoli, um, Molu, 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 um, Jusu, Jusu Tijani, Augustin Monsare, um, George Moore, Steve Miller, my brother, how are you? Um, Claro, I see Gloria, T. Kelvin, Shelton, um, Lincoln, Mayway, uh, Moses King, Richard Colley, uh, Richard, how are you? Um, Bono Jackson, Defodo, Bono Jackson, what's up, comrade? Uh, Regna, Devon Johnson, Augustine, Nepla, Ben Tamba. Um, I see all of you. Um, Atopin um, is in class. Um, Moses King, um, Gloria Boyman, Clara Way Howard, um, George Moore, Darlington Massacre, Ben Carson, uh, Ben Tamba, Jacob Nathan, Steve Miller, um, everybody. I see all of you. Now, the next thing to do when we'll teach off any calling rule. It's all of you now to share the show. All of you that are present in class. I see Henry Clements, uh, Elijah, um, Alfred, Cowboy, uh, Women Dwell, all of you that yeah, let's share the show, at least to five person each. Sadash, Sadash or so you drate, uh that signal of store. The man you need a ha sometimes you walk up or ready to call your name. Kelly, Sukuta, uh about CO2. Um why I don't see George Seal. Just you, um, where are you, my man? You, you MIA today. I see uh, Tino. What's up, Tino? All the way there from Ganta. Uh, Tino, it's a long time friend from Ganta. Those days when I used to work with the NGO, we, we used to hang out there in Ganta City. It was, uh, it was my hangout spot. Uh, the NGO work. Uh, it's good to see you all. I see Augustine, Eugene, um, Shedrack, Augustine, everybody. Tenet Kopo, how are you, uh, sister? And Telvin Shelton. Uh, Summer Rejoice Khan, Mark Toba, and everybody. Josh, I see Josh. Yeah, my man Josh, you yeah, finally. <laughs> uh, Sis Fobi Warite, um, Richard Harris, and everybody. Welcome all of you to class. Can you share the show? Um, tonight, um, we, yeah, as usual, we come to you on the following radio station uh, Bushra Radio FM 98.1 in Montserrado, Shakta FM 102.5 in Montserrado, Premier FM 98.1 in Banga, Bon County. Uh, Radio Tupa FM 89.1. Radio Tupa is 89.1 in uh, in Bezon. Bezon as Bikana and Grand Bassa County. Um, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 in Vonjeman. Radio Joy Africa 97.1 in Maggie. The Voice of Gompa 106.5 all the way there in Gompa City, Nima County. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to welcome all of you to the class we loaded today. Um, it's Wednesday. We have a lot in store. On tonight's edition, we'll begin the conversation as usual with what's trending. Uh, each of our panelists will speak about, in, 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 in three to five minutes each, we'll speak about trending national issues. And then we'll move the conversation. We'll look at the Minister of Information, Culture, and Tourism, Ledger Wu Renning. Uh, Ledger Wu Renning had a very... Uh, uh, um, intense interview i would say with uh with a sister radio station okfm OK in which he revealed a lot of things i uh, will play uh, an excerpt of that interview and then our panelists will weigh in on it then from there we'll open the phone lines allow you call express yourself and and, and give your view on on what we've discussed so it promises to be good um grab your bottle of water soft drink or beer wherever you are grab some popcorn grab everything you have wherever you are if you're in Monrovia grab your your little Guinness style beer or your JLA small tea uh, um, to just relax and let's have a, a, a really good time tonight um it's, it's gonna be good um hopefully we'll be joined by some other folks um along the conversation but tonight it's gonna be a very interesting conversation we're gonna look deep into the Ministry of Information Culture and Tourism we're going to just oppose that with the government of Liberia in terms of the government overall strategy and communication. Pia, who, who is on the, the set tonight, is a communication expert himself, working in the field for over 10 years. Um, I've given him a lot of, of hours, as they say. You need 10,000 hours to be an expert. So 10 years is enough to get 10,000 hours. We'll talk to all deeper and, and we'll dig into a legend's mind a little bit to see what is happening what is what is really playing out within the government and so that would be the conversation and so as usual we will go around the hall uh, yeah if you got yes this will be grab your mineral water bottle and uh and let's and let's have fun tonight um so we'll go around the hall we'll begin with pastor mo uh three to five minutes i'll be very cocked i'll be very critical this time maybe the only flexibility will be pia because <laughs> because <you see. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't law be the law. If you want, if you want to find me, everybody get find me. I ain't got a problem with that. Okay, we need to find me, and we'll pay attention to the time. So, uh, Pastor Mo, you can go ahead with your five, your three to five minutes. I can't share the show, everybody. Please share the yeah. show. We're appealing to you. Just share, it. share it. as much as you can. Let's let's get more people to around. No, we have thousands of people listening on radio. But at the same time, we wanted to reach as many as we can on social media. So let's go. Let's go, uh, Pastor Mo. Thanks. Um, first, I want to appreciate God, who is the giver of life, <clears throat> and having given us the opportunity to be alive today and count among the living. I also want to say thank you to the producer of this great show. I want to say thank you to you. And thank you to the host for bringing me on as one of the panelists, I also want to say good evening to the panelists that is on and, the one that, and to Dwali that is going to join us later. I also want to say good evening to our many, many listeners there in Radio Land. Sorry, uh, Pastor, you uh, are disrespecting that, that man who said no football being that, that, that Ronaldo fan. That's why he wanted me <laughs> about no football being You know, I want to say, <laughs> Mr. Pia, I got answer for everybody. <laughs> Put it as well. I don't answer because he had letters as well. I can know that the man telling me no football been there. So, um, I just want to say good evening to our many listeners there in Radio Land. Uh, without you, we would not be here. We say thank you for being active. Thank you to our many viewers there in Facebook that are watching us live from around the world. Indeed, there is a lot of training issues in Liberia, and uh, one uh. Uh, observed that Honorable Boyka, Honorable Jose and Boyka went to a memorial service in Liberia for two fire victims that went to rescue some people from in a home that was engulfed with fire in a so cleaned community. And the two rescuers that went in and evacuated managed to evacuate the occupants of the home. They got caught up into the fire and the two of them died in the fire. And um, in Honorable Barker attended that memorial service. Uh, the two persons, one of them happens to be the late Richardson Double Jr. and the late Tia Phillips Prince Mayonga uh, uh, from the Sokini community. And that's a great thing that uh, uh, our leaders should be able to identify with victims, most especially people who die of a tragedy. And we don't really see that happening in our government, like people die mysteriously, we don't see our government identifying with them, except they know that poison, and they go to identify with them. One of our, uh, what, say you say we're going to talk about uh, uh, the information ministry. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell on that because that is also a training issue. Also, uh, I overheard there is a rumor of a planned meeting with uh, with with Honorable. Cummings and the Honorable Senator Nyombli uh, uh, Kanga Lawrence. So we're waiting for, for Mr. Tume or Daniel Sandu to come and clarify that. But I show that is not true because you will not try to, you try to destroy my party, try to destroy my repetition. And at the end of the day, you want to go into a meeting with me. Can you be trusted? Also, uh, I saw on social media that. Uh, the city mayor is now leaving the city of Monrovia, going into Lofa. So I don't know if he's the city mayor for Lofa. At the same time, the city mayor for, for Monrovia, that there, there is a question that needs to be answered. And I think many people serving in this government is misplaced. That includes the president of Liberia. He also is misplaced. And in 2023, we need to replace all of these people because of uh, he never identified with kids because election is coming and, and, and you want sympathy from the people you go to Lofa to identify with them. And I think that is very, that being deceptive to the little kids that is looking up to us as leader. And, uh, and uh, my last training issue, it has to do with the church in Liberia and the position of pastors and bishops and apostles of uh, I think we have too many pastors. I think we have too many bishops. I think we have too many apostles. 
We have too many prophets and prophetess. And I think it is about time that these people need to be visited by God because uh, uh, many of these pastors don't know the authority the church have. And, I, and, and, and my memory can serve me right. The church is the voice of the land. And the church should be able to stand with those that are oppressed and not stand with the oppressor. Because as I read the Bible, that there are many times God will send a, 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 a prophet. He will send men of God. Moses didn't have a church. Isaiah didn't have a church. Elisha didn't have a church. Elisha didn't have a church. Many of those great men in the Bible, they didn't have a church. Nehemiah didn't have a church. Jeremiah didn't have a church. But God used them to confront leaders that were ill treating the people. Unfortunately for us, we see that our church's leaders who have churches, they use in the pulpit to destroy the land. And what they don't understand, the church is the voice of the land. Just before I leave, on a one minute, you see, these people in the world that want power, they know the strength of the church. They know the church has influence. They know the church has power. So what do they do? When they want to run for position, they go to the church because they know that the church has influence. And the moment they win those, those positions, they turn their back on the church, they turn their backs on the people. And I want to say kudos to the late Archbishop Marco Macala Francis. He proved to the Liberian, he proved to the world the importance of the church in society, the importance of, of his position in society. I want to say kudos to the late Wilhelmina Dukle of the Faith Healing Temple. She proved to the world, she proved to the Liberian people the importance of the calling of God. I also want to say kudos to the, to the late Bishop Diggs from, from the Methodist Church. I remember growing up, he was one of those that, that hosted that march. Remember when the pastor was in the march, what they say? This, this, this was from the Lutheran Church, Pastor, not Methodist Church. Okay, thank you. I remember when they hosted that march and they were marching to the capital and they said, Monkey must come down. At that time, uh, uh, it was Samuel Doe was in power and people were dying. That is the responsibility of the church. That is the responsibility of pastor, but not to side with the oppressor and oppress those that are oppressed and hide behind the Bible and desecrate the name of our God and desecrate Christianity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Mo. Um, that was brief and succinct. Um, let me go to Mo Ali. What's trending, my man? Thank you, Stephen, and thank you to Pastor Mo. So, um, I'd like to start off with one thing Pastor Mo touched on. There was this alleged meeting between um, Senator Lawrence and Mr. Alexander Cummings. I want to talk only because I was concerned last night when I received calls, calls, so many calls from people. They say one, I think Spoon Talk was saying how young people went to Comey's and asking him to be his running mate and blah, blah, blah. You know, people are calling from all over, from the U.S. and here. So earlier this morning, I called her and I asked her what I'm hearing all over the place. And I'll respond, well, Mo, I'm looking stupid. I'm supposed to get out and go to Comey's to ask him to be running mate. In the first place, I am not a desperate person. I am not desperate for running mate business. All I want to see is for us to have a good leadership for this country. So whether I become running me or not, that is not my concern. That is not my priority. As a matter of fact, I've had not even a telephone conversation with Mr. Cummings. I don't remember when last we had a telephone conversation, at least to talk about meeting with him. But you see, the reason why these people are bringing in this propaganda is to sow a seal of this call within the collaboration that we are enjoying so that they will begin to say, oh, yes, they don't want to take the woman and maybe something could get to the head if this was somebody overly ambitious and say, okay, yeah, we'll start to explore other avenues. 
but thankfully that is not the case and nothing has gotten over her she remains committed according to what she told me to ensuring that we have a better leadership for Liberia and she's enjoying the collaboration with us I'm sure Senator Dillon and I spoke this morning he even said he will at some point in time he might come on the show to provide some clarification the other thing I wanted to talk about you know I every day I listen to President we are there are things that are here and we need to clarify some of these things the president said there was a commitment from the Qatari in there that they will give, I think, some hundred million dollars for the Lofa Road. You know, I, I am not a diplomat. Maybe Pia will uh, teach us on this. But the thing is, hundred million dollars is not just small money, especially for a country like Liberia. And that they will give us hundred million dollars, or as either grant or loan, and there is absolutely no communicate from either the host country, I mean the country that is providing the money, or from us, or some joint communicate to say, okay, we have had, we have had this discussion with the Liberian government, and this is what we agree on. Absolutely nothing. So all their own diplomatic things. It's just by way of more, we're going back to oral history. Oh, yeah, the Qatari government said they will give you $100 million. We went on the side, they posted they will give you this amount. No, these things are not just done like that. At least from what we see, what we saw from a responsible government. When 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 the MCC announced that they were giving money to four or five countries, the first thing is that they issue a statement. And besides issuing a statement, even President Biden went on his Twitter account and issued a statement. Why is that come because you're talking to sedition and you just tell them all kind of things? You can just say they gave 100 million. Where is the proof? So when I was saying that somebody asked me where the proof that they didn't get 100 million. So the question I asked me, but where the proof that they gave 100 million, they will give 100 million. Because the proof we see in this kind of matter is. For, for for the government, either the giving government or the receiving government to issue a communique, or they're trying to tell us that they do not have anybody in our own government to write. Or the Qatari government is not even is 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 not responsible too to their own of people that when they gave you money, they will not inform them. I don't think that is that is the case. And lastly, for me, President, we are keen after spending 48 days 49 50 days out of the country in the wilderness doing nothing he brought for us one go and i will remind people every day what president we have brought it's like they didn't bring no hundred and six a hundred million from any qatari government i will remind the people about what he brought one go from the walker for his son a t-shirt signed by which is beg John Terry to sign a 50 metric ton of, of, of sugar panel from Saudi Arabia. That's what I know about. Now, you spend all that time out of the country. You came back. Instead of addressing the citizens and giving them a report of your trip, what you got there, President Weah was only concerned about addressing seditions. As if to say the entire country is now CDC. And he didn't care for the rest of the citizens. Y'all want to protest? Go to the battle bath and protest. There. Of course the people will protest at the battle bath. But while you are president, you are under obligation to, 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 you are under obligation to, 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 to report to the citizens even if it were one day that you spent out of the country. And so these things touched me, and I thought I should speak on them. You can't just go stay out of the country. You can't you just address the edition. The country is now a CDC country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pia, you muted, Pastor. Somebody just text to the, our many viewers. I'm sorry. Um, I forgot about Sheikh Kafuma comment. Kone. Yes, indeed. Sheikh Kafuma Kone was one of the great voices too in Liberia and kudos to him and may his soul rise in perfect peace. Thank you to our Muslim community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's good that we 
to add that. And, 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 and to Ali's point, before Pia John, and, 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 and look, you saw when the US government said they will give 165 million to Africa for elections and, uh, and um, good governance across Africa. President Biden posted it on his on his Twitter account and on his uh, on his Facebook page. You know, when the government comes home and says we got two hundred blah blah million in this one, the first question anybody to ask them: Well, the Qatari government did they didn't publish anything? Somebody say, "Okay, you fifty hundred million is no joke." That they will not even publish it even on the Qatari news agency. No publication. The only thing they said on the Qatari news agency was that why at the stadium president we are had a chance to meet with the Emir before the game. He has snuck in while the game was about to start and had a, a brief chat with him, like any every other president would do. There was no official communication for even the, the one they say from Hungary. There was no official communication issued by the, the, the Hungarian government. There was nothing. The only thing is just audio money. We are just passing around lying to seditions. Lying to seditions. And the good thing about this is the more you lie, the more the expectations are above the roof, and the more you can produce what you've said, they will know it's a lie. Because what happened, remember one time they said there will be Football Academy, uh, I know Duya, I suppose Sonny were building Football Academy across Liberia. What happened to that? Oh, Oh, Vla, let me go to Pia. Pia, go ahead. Let me let me pick in on where Mo ended. I personally feel there is no offense and there's no crime in anybody meeting anybody. So if Mr. Cummings and Senator Kanga got interest in meeting. I don't know why there should be an alarm about that. What I would be concerned about is if people who are or they've been on opposing sides of the political device were tend to have meeting Nicodemusly, then I have a problem with that. So if Mr. Cummings and uh, Senator Kanga are having meeting under the cover of darkness then it's an issue. Other than that, I don't think we should pose or interpose any restriction in political actors meeting and talking to each other. Uh, I don't see anything that stops coming from meeting and talking to Joe Buaka. So I don't um, see anything that stops coming from meeting with uh, uh, Yuri or anybody else. So my only concern would be if anybody wants to meet anybody, it has to be open, then we know that it is uh, covered with sincerity. So, Pierre, it is not It is not about the meeting. Let me make a clarification quick. It is not about the meeting. It is the news they are carrying around that concern uh, the senator. Uh, the news around it is that she has gone to Mr. Cummings to beg Mr. Cummings to select her as a running mate. Yeah, okay. So even 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 at that, um it, it, it will all start from the concept that somebody has somebody have me. So all that I'm saying, so take for example, the senator had told you there was no me. Um spoon is on the other side. I don't know whether they they really see themselves as people who got repetitive. Because if you're in this if you're in this business that we are all into. You got to do your best as possible so that people can see you as being credible. If you get through information or anyhow, then you're doing more damage to, your, to yourselves than even the people who you throw in information all about. So they said it. I don't know what informed their, their, their revelation. Uh, you said you've spoken to the senator. The senator said nothing has such happened. I was only saying, let us not make it to look like it is forbidding for people acting on the political stage uh, to see the need to meet each other. Senator Kanga was on the show, uh, Prince Moe were here, and I had intentionally asked all of them when they appear on, on our show as to whether what they were into is basically because they have ambitions that they want to protect 
or is about the Liberian people. Both Prince Moe and Senator Kanga did say they just want the better leadership for the country. It is not about them. Until I see something otherwise, I hold them by that standard. I hold them by what they said. So since you spoke to her, we've heard from her. I mean, if we should take you by your word, I mean, we've heard from her. And, and we leave it at that with eyes open and ears open as we move forward. And, and, and from the perspective you spoke, I, I don't know why ANC may even want to celebrate uh, Senator Kanga. You fought this woman. You disrespected her. Mr. Cummings, you want to have political engagement, you leave your party headquarters. With no reference to Senator Kanga, you take it to her office to challenge her, to, to provoke her. So if there was any instance where she would want to be a running mate of coming or Kumi would want to be a running mate, it's it, it just going to be like a black snake arrangement that everybody should run away from. That's all I can say to her that I've moved to different because you all saw what they've done to this woman for months. Use musability, a stooge of the government. They've disintegrated an institution that was painstakingly built by Councillor Bronsky. They've tried to diminish herself, to break her down. As a woman, I think she's still standing politically because she's strong. And if there were any period, any time that she thought that that is a place that she could seek political sanctuary, there's something fundamentally could be wrong with herself. So, and, and, and if communist people are also attempting to even chase her for anything or such, then they need to see doctor because there's something gotta be wrong with them. You've done everything to destroy this person. How could they be an interest to you? So I just saying that in passing without one of my training issues, but saying you brought it up more. But the, what I wanted to start with is that because we're in a global village, the war is a global village. I remember 300 days ago uh, with the man of conquest and expansionism, Putin and his killer forces invaded Ukraine. They've calculated that in a few days, they will overrun Kyiv. They will destroy Zelensky. They will subjugate the people of Ukraine to their wings and caprices. It's been 300 days. I remember in the first two days of that struggle, the US, the greater power, said to Zelensky, we want to get you out. I remember he said, give me guns, not a ride. And he has led his people in what is not just a national resistance, but global resistance. And today, Zelensky is sitting here in the White House, meeting with President Biden. And it's just, it's, it's, for me, it's a great thing because I live here. I'm a part of this global village. The country I come from is a part of the global village. If there are powerful forces who believe in expansionism, who want to have conquest war on little countries and take over their territories, and they can stand up and not run away like the president of, 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 of Afghanistan, we need to salute them. And Dualu is here, others are here, we got a long way to go. So I have other people, I'll just say this one. So I heard the other day that the LRA was launching uh, what they call, what did they call it? What were you on the ground? Foundation. Humanitarian or whatever foundation. And I was wondering, how do we sit down and allow people to establish medium through which they can steal? The act establishing the LRA is clear as to what that institution exists for. The things that foundations can do, many of them run by individual and, and, and personality, not government institution, are far from what the LRA is supposed to be doing. But if, the, if, if it is about relief and other things, the government has the National Disaster Relief, Com uh, relief Commission that should be reaching out to people who are in need. So for a revenue raising entity established by law, with clearly defined responsibilities. To leave away from those responsibilities, leave away from the law, 
and opt to establish a foundation, a monetary foundation to do what? I don't know. And it's been allowed and everybody closing their eye. It's just a medium to steal. How do you account for? So fundamental question. Where the resources are coming from to run the foundation? Is it government money? Is it the same money the LRA raising? Where the money coming from? All the LRA will be soliciting from, from private donors to do what? So let Thomas Dona and his people pay attention to what they have been established to do. Let them not worry about things that they got nothing to do with. You got your own challenges. It's like I'm in my house. I can't even feed my children. They say I want to feed more Ali children. I want to feed Pastor more children. How does that work? So the entire country is so that he got to take about to be stupid and they can just get out, manipulate them, and, 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 and make arrangements that would make them to get e-money and that would not be accounted for. You're not NGO. What can you, how, how can you have a, a foundation? Thomas does not tell me which part of your access you can run a foundation. So they got to stop this stupidity. You are, you are a well-educated guy. You came to Harvard, of all places. Relatively, you may be doing well with the, the core function of that place. Why are you jumping all over the place and wanting to be, you know, extra legal? Cool down, brother. Relax yourself. Pay attention to your work. And maybe you won't run for Sunday tomorrow now. Why are you thinking about foundation all those kind of things? Do it as a person, take your salary, your money salary, and be reaching out to the poor, be giving it to them. LRA does not need foundation. And we're going to think you have there, but somebody talking about NATO. No, Pia, we're not going to that NATO. So why you it there? Ali, send it that thing. Ali, your, 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 Toalu, um, he, I see his, his tags in Toalu and the people. And so <laughs> that's a very interesting one. Uh, Toalu is joining us for the first time. Hopefully this will not be his last time. Um, we'd like to see him come here regularly once he has the time. Him and George Lobo are very, very, very vital to the, to the, to, to, to our national polity, our, our, um, our national conversation, how Liberia, how we can move our country in the right direction. And, and over the years, Toalu, has been committed to doing that. And so if you follow him on either his podcast or on the drive, most time he's passionate about Liberia and he's 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 he's, he's, he's one of a few persons who I've interacted with who 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 has shown the desire and love for country, the patriotism that one needs to move a country forward. So Dwalu, it's good to have you uh join us for the very first time. We'd like to say welcome to the class. We know that uh, this is your place. You 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 you're welcome here every now and then. But let's hear from you. What's trending from your end? Well, for me, it's so much. I want to welcome the audience as always. And I want to thank everybody for inviting me, especially Mr. Johnson. Thank you so much, Moali. I think it's my first time interacting with you as well. But I want to say this. And I heard Pia talking about the issue of Young Blikanga Lawrence. And I, and I believe we are giving it so much credibility by talking about it. I believe it was an ANC strategy to, to literally get this going. But I don't think we should give it the validity it requires by talking about it over and over because I believe there is nothing there. It's just being presented in our fashion. But this is what's concerning me today. And I want to say this. <clears throat> our PFM law, uh, there's a publication today on Front Page Africa that talked about close to 43 or 44% of our national budget, there is no expense report. Yet these people continue to want more money from the government. I don't know how we can run a country where, for example, you can give Stephen Johnson $1.5 million dollars without any expense report, and then the following year, you give him more money without even explaining what he's doing with his money. There is no accountability. The legislature is sitting on their hands. They are not doing their job. The, the judiciary, well, the executive branch of government is not doing their job. Now, there are reports, and these reports are extremely valid in many instances because we've seen it over and over. Now, members of the legislature, some of these entities that are using government money without any expense report, sometimes they are, they are protecting them because they're getting kickbacks from this entity. You have to read the publications they don't from Beach Africa. I think our PFM law are not being followed and to the detriment of the entire country. 
uh, from LU to even the finance ministry to some of these government entities, they are not presenting expense report to the government to justify the allocations being made in the, in, in the budget. This is not good for the country. This is hurting the country. We have to do a whole lot more. But I want to say this before I give it to you guys. The legislature is not a child's play thing. You cannot, you cannot, under any circumstance, take children and pull them in the legislature because this is a responsible place. Because there's so much work in that place. Most of these guys don't know what to do. This is why they're not holding people to account. Some of these auditing should be done by the legislature itself. They have an oversight, regulatory responsibility to the country. They are not doing this, and most of the government agencies know this. So most of them are circumventing the system and doing their own thing. And Liberian people continue to suffer. Once again, the PFL laws have to be followed. That's what's training for me today. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, very good. One, very minute. Good. one minute, one minute. Let me let me pick on something Dualu said. Dualu, the last point you made about auditing versus the legislature. The legislature has no moral authority to talk about audit because from Ellen Johnson's Salif ascendancy in 2005 to 2022, the Liberian legislature has operated without being audited. You can imagine what that is. What government ministries, agencies, and other power statuses have been audited regularly, the legislature has refused to be audited. But yet they used to take all the report on us going and group the hard air for what financial something, 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 and conduct public hearings on all the report from different ministries and agencies and reach conclusions. They don't have the authority, they are corrupt. That's why they don't allow them. Well, they are corrupt. They have the, 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 the statutory mandate to do that, even though they are not audited themselves, but it's still their responsibility. I just want to maintain that. Because what they should they, be doing they, and they, what they, they are not doing. The budget often has that. Correct. They, they have that responsibility, but they have destroyed themselves, and that's the reason why they don't have the money to do that. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Uh, because if if you if you can't, and I think the general logic here, if you can't, if you can't, um, uh, um, if you can't audit yourself, how will you have any credibility to want I to agree. audit somebody? You know, it, it undermines your credibility. So having said that, and I, it's good that we're talking about, about budget and, and allocation and responsibility of the government in terms of how much money they pump into the system and getting... First thing, we've not been able to see over time the, the budget performance report. Now, that budget performance report that will come quarterly, what it does is it provides an outlook, the right. economic outlook about how much money was expended and the impact. And so whether it was through the... The, the, the private sector investment portion, the PSIP, or just general expenditure areas like uh, like uh, public administration and, 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 and running the government, we still need to see that. And that's why over time, it is difficult to really assess as to what exactly we've been able to collect, how much we've been able to spend, and the impact, the measure impact. And so next week, we will be giving the report card of the government and I would love, Dualu, for you to join us, you and George to join us. I want us to have a full house where we can give the government its grade. So we'll look at each area of the country and the government 106 premises that they made in 2018 and grade them on how much they were able to score on each of those premises. But now, this brings us to our main conversation. And, and then let me just lay the basis for this conversation. Uh, the Minister of Information is the... Of, is the official spokesperson of the government. Correct. Um, and that's how critical. Now, the Ministry of Information has several components. It has the cultural and the tourism component. So um, our Liberian heritage, our, our beaches and other tourism attraction, the Ministry of Information covers that. Over the last maybe 30, 40, 50 years, or however long the Ministry of Information has been around. The Ministry of Information has focused mainly only on the information aspect because that is the source of most of what will come to the ministry. Most of what will come to the ministry goes to what they call covert operation and covert media strategy and blah, blah, blah. Now, it's good that PI is here with all he was a deputy minister there, so he will have, he will have more depth on the ministry now, but in recent time, we've noticed that the minister of information, who is ledger with Rennie, has been quiet. Whether it was on the president's trip in in Qatar, or the president's trip in Washington to the UNDA, the General Assembly, or the recent trip on the Africa U.S. Africa summit, 
the pre the Minister of Information has been in the shadows. We've seen Eugene Nambwe, former Minister of Information, now Maritime Commissioner, playing the role. We've also seen, though briefly, the press secretary talking uh, uh, on this issue. Now, today, the Minister of Information, Ledger Will Rennie, had an interview with a sister radio station. In that interview, he spoke what I would call, he spoke passionately, passionately about the issues. And I would like for us to to dig deep into it. So I'll play the clip, and then I will have us listening, and then we can we can weigh in on it. Let me let me let me play a clip for us to take a listen. But you know my ministry budget to operate now for the whole fiscal year. Mm. This fiscal period, January 1, 2022 to December thirty one, twenty twenty two. Seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. You see what? You talking about one seven, one seven five hundred. No, oh, Minister, I don't want to close the interview. You can't be serious. Seventeen thousand dollars. Right? No, I've, been, I've, been, I've been bombarded. I've been bruised. My reputation has been hurt, Clarence. Let me say it today. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. And to date, since July this year. Not a dime has come from the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning. I'm up to 17,000. All of that 17 to run the, to, to operate the Ministry of uh, uh, Information Culture of Persons. So how are you, how are you working now? How are you, how are you doing your work? So, so we go there. So we go there. So we go there. We do what we're able to do under the circumstances. So we go there. We do what we're able to do under the circumstances. Don't put a cat out of the Do you feel the resigning? No. I mean, I wouldn't let President Weir down. To do so, I wouldn't do uh, it. Is, it has not crossed my path. Uh, perhaps maybe I won't have a meeting with him because I don't believe he's he's fully abreast. You should have access to the president, Mr. Minister. Yeah, it's, it's you, the president, you, the president should call you every morning to say, "Let him what's up." All you should have is an easier access to the it, president. Easier, easier said than done. Uh, we're, we're in a political world. We're in a political field. Certain things happen behind the scenes. I wouldn't like to delve into it, Clarence. But I say this much. All right, uh, you know. I have a great deal of admiration, respect, and loyalty to the president. We have no doubt about it. Even if I, if I was fired tomorrow morning or I left his position, I remain loyal to President Weir because he's done great things. I know the man. He loves people. He loves this country. I know what his intentions are for Liberia. So I'm not going to be one of those such persons who, once you leave a position, then all of a sudden you see. You tend to an awful kick okay. you or you tend to a negative person against that individual. I thought I'd never do it. If I did so, my God would never would never bless me. But the truth is, in, in governance, there are political just just that positions. People people hate people because of who they are. Not necessarily because they have a personal beef with you, but they did because they see you differently. So they do everything. To bring you down so that they shine. And some of us aren't those who go around yelling and, and fighting and making noise. And, you know, I try to do my work in the modesty of, of my intelligence, you know, trying to, to engage with people who I believe will listen, will, do, will lend an ear that will bring the kind of results that we need to do the work we want to do. But it has reached a point that I believe that my reputation too, personal reputation, has come on the line. How frequent do you talk to the president? Uh, having, you know, president, I haven't spoken in the last uh, uh, three weeks because he's been traveling out and about. I hope that we can we can do that during the course of this festive season. Your your the expression in your face uh, is telling me that something is not right. You're you're getting tired of something. Well, I, I'm not that I'm getting tired, but you know. I have a reputation and I have a family, you know, I have a reputation, I have a family and when, when one's reputation is on the line, because every time I wake up people say a lot of things, oh Renny not doing this, Renny, they say you're not that kind of a Renny, robust person, Renny, yes, because an empty belly cannot talk loud, you understand what I mean? cannot talk loud. Send the team to play on a hunger uh, uh, and, and don't get any food to eat and see whether they will win the game. Send your children to school in the morning hungry. 
and don't give them recent money and see whether they will score good grades. They will be constantly, they will, they will be cooking palm out of him, they will be swelling the way to the school yard because they're hungry. The truth of the matter is, we need to have a strategic, intentional approach to communications. But you know my ministry budget to operate? No, for the whole fiscal year. Mm. You're muted. You're muted. There are lots of things. Can you hear me now? Yeah. There are lots of things to, to unpack in this uh in this uh, uh uh interview. In this interview. You you listen to him talk about uh empty stomach can can go to school, children with empty stomach. The Ministry of Information has a budget, an annual budget of seventeen thousand. Can you imagine from January to December seventeen thousand? If you divide that by twelve months. Imagine how much the Ministry of Information has to operate. And he also said that since July, they've not received a penny from the Ministry of Finance. And he also said that he's not spoken to the president in the last three weeks. So this, this is coming from a man who is supposed to be the official spokesperson for the government, somebody who is supposed to be in a cycle. If you look at it in the context of Western, Western governance, Western bureaucracy, that man should see the president every day. He should be the field. He should be the first person who should see the president every morning before the president goes to work. Dwalo, you go for it first. What do you make of this? Is the government imploding? Is this a sign no. of things to come? You know, are we are we are we in the end times? No, we're not in the end times. I love this. Let me say let me say this to you. There is this thing out there that and people from the CDC camp have a tendency to speak as though the opposition is a monolith. I said there's only one entity. Oh, the opposition is in disarray. They are in disarray. Let me tell you the truest disarray right now is the CDC-led government. Let me tell you the reason why they have not imploded. It's because they have access to the national coffers. This is the reason why they have access to money and they're only relying on that money. But if you want to speak to citizens outside where they can still maintain their job, most of them will speak freely. But there's several things I want people to listen to very, very carefully. When you hear Lester Wurrini using words like just opposing, just opposition, it's a cool word for many. People are clamoring for position. They won't be seen by the president. Other people pushing other people aside. There is infighting. That's a cool word, meaning just oppose. My man, move ahead of my time. My man, move ahead of my time. So there is an infighting in the CDC administration. This has just been admitted by the information minister when he said just oppose. Number two, MT Bella cannot stand. You know, seditions are very quick to say, you know, he will get it right. Most people in the government are not getting paid. The reason why, if we had a society where 50% of people in that society can act out a living in the private sector adequately, will become freer by the day. But the reason why most people cannot say anything, because they depend on this $200 per month job to live. So they are willing to do anything. A man, look, this is why I tell people all the time. Don't you ever, under any circumstance, take a government job, under any circumstance, if you cannot adequately act out of living in the private sector, or if you cannot fall back on something, you are going to take your masculinity and you're going to give it away to people to be controlled. The, I, Ensu Opa Zina Borakai Dwalu, will be government. And I get my budget I'm supposed to get and I will stay in your government for what? I will resign the same day and I will do it publicly because I will tell you I'm not going to do it. Look, President we are. And I will, before I give it to my brother, uh, the, the Reverend here, I will say this. This phrase about President We Are Love the Country is one of the most dangerous phrases that come out of Liberia every single time. When people that left over Reno say this, the reason why they say this, they are pandering to the president. Love encapsulates several things. And I'm going to listen to them. If I'm married to a woman, if I love that woman, my in most important role is to ensure she's happy. That word happy means there are provisions for her. She's laughing. She's sheltered. She's clothed. Her dignity is kept intact. Her, her children are fair. She has a future knowing that I'm going to be around to protect her. That's what encapsulates love. What is President We Are? Personification of love to the Liberian people. Not just saying it. Has he taken care of the mortality, mortality rate in the country? Are our mothers having decent and babies in great hospitals? Do we have decent roads? Are our education system up to par? Do we have hospital? What's the unemployment rate in the country? How are men behaving in the country? What the hope of joy rate in the country? Are we 
creating an environment for our people. This is what love means. But you guys see this gentle throwing love around when they don't understand what love means. President, we are does not love this country. President, we are loves himself. He cares about one thing and one thing only. It is the fanfare of the position of the presidency and not the responsibilities that come with our office. I will give it to you, Pastor Moore. And, and, and Dwalu, let me let me just say this, and I and I do agree with you because you know most of the time when you hear Sidisian speak, they talk about he has the country at heart. And 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 this for the longest has been something that we've listened to. You know, whether when he was playing soccer. Or uh, in his political life, we always heard Sidition say, Joshua has the country at heart. Not until we are became president. <laughs> and one of the things we've been able to find out through his presidency is that we are only concerned with the thought and pageantry of the office rather than doing the actual work mm. to get on a to get on a charter flight. Yes. To drink, to drink adult beverages, to drink, you know, exotic, exotic champagne and whiskey. Yes. yes. To, to, to come home and people land the roads and welcome you and you get out, out of the car from the top and wave. You know, it was something he did for 40 years, almost 40 yes. years in Europe. People yes. were cheering him in the in the stadium for over 40 years. So yes. this is why he thinks he's afraid of anybody who condemns or criticizes him because for over 40 years of his career, he watched people cheer him. When he's playing against Juventus, the state of yes. his with AC Milan yes. fans, they're yelling. That's why we are afraid of protest, because protest undermines. He has a distorted he, truth of reality. Exactly. That would be, and you saw, and, 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 and this was the same we are who resigned from the national team after Liberians took to the streets to criticize him for what they believe was he sold the game against Ghana that did not us the chance to go to the World Cup. So we can dig deep, deep into this man's sake. It sounds fresh, but it's not. Yeah. So let me come to you, Pastor Mo. You listen to 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 the Minister of Information. This is not just anybody. This is the Minister of Information. The Minister of Information is essentially saying empty back and stay. A hungry man is an angry man. No matter how much money you you have if you can't feed your children, they don't they're not going to concentrate. And you know, hunger cannot they say they say beauty cannot hunger cannot favor beauty because if no matter what happens, if you're hungry, you can't concentrate. You go to school on, on, on deflected stomach, you're not gonna concentrate. So if the minister of information is saying one with our budget says 17,000 for 12 months with not getting a dime since July. This is the and then you have the government saying all is where. The people enjoy. We're bringing two hundred million in, 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 in support, and we're paying people on time. Samuel Twelve goes on the radio and say the 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 the, the fundamentals of our economy are strong. What do you make of this? If the if, if those who are inside themselves are crying, what more about the ordinary Liberians who don't have? Now, mind you, the Minister of Information makes somewhere around four to five thousand dollars based on what we saw. So if this guy is still crying, even though he makes far more above the national average, and we're in the percentile of only maybe 0.5% of the population. But he understands he's crying. What do you make of this, Pastor Mo? Well, uh, for one fact is that there's no better way but Eduardo who have said it. Indeed, the house is divided. It's not going to stand. There is a division within the government. Like, like Brother Eduardo said, as I quote him, Many say the opposition are not together, but are they looking at the government that have the resources of the country at their disposal? They tend to spend it the way they want to spend it, the way they wish to spend it. And as I was listening to this interview, there's a lot of indicators. There is a lot of indicators. And the indicators Look at the expressions on his face as an information minister. You look at the expressions on his face, it says that he's dissatisfied. But then my question is, if you are dissatisfied as a professional journalist that that, that did this job for, for your last days, because I remember you were with, with our Radio Veritas. I remember when he became commentator. I remember when he read news, when he became broadcaster. So this is your profession. Now you are at the highest level of your profession and you, are not, and, and, and you are not effective as you should be effective. Why can you resign? 
Now, many Liberians, many Liberians use this word. This man loved the country. This man loved his people. And my question here is, do we Liberians understand the meaning of love? Do we know the meaning of love? Like Dwalu said, you know, Dwalu just took everything that I wrote down while listening to the speech. And it was like, he saw what I wrote down. How can I express my love for my children in my home? How can I show to my children that I care for them? How can I show to my family that I love them? In the way I can express to my children in my home, because the president is the father of Liberia, whether we like it or not. He is the father. Is he taking care of his children? So how can I express love for my children in, in my home? Is by making sure they have their daily needs. Make sure that they go to school. Make sure that they, they eat on time. Make sure that shelter is over their head. Make sure that they have clothes. Make sure that they go out. They're looking good. Make sure that they have good health care. Just a few, few hours ago, I, I watched an interview with the Teacher Association of Liberia. They had a press conference, conference and they decided to have a protest on the illegal deduction of their salary. They said the government did it wrongly. So, oh, how can you say this man loved the country? I think the information minister is afraid. I think there's more he wants to say, but he afraid to say it. And, and I think he have threatened to resign, but I think they just got him there because he know what has happened to other people. And if he do resign, he know that they're going to go after him because there is a track record here. Many people that resign, they can escape the country before you get to know they have resigned. So if you look at the water and seawall, seven to eight months, they have not paid their worker. Who does that? And you still use the word, this man love the country, this man love his people. I say to the Liberians, we all made a mistake. Why am I saying we all? Because you all voted in the majority. It's time these people be voted out. There's nothing better they can do for you. They can improve your lives. They can change the situation. They have created the situation. And the situation they, are, they have created, it is a way to vote them out. And I say to Liberia, make the best decision 2023. They are incompetent. They cannot govern the country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Ali, let me come to you. Ali, uh, you know, Ali, uh, uh, let me just sit on this platform here today. Ali and I, uh, we're very close. Uh, many persons don't know this, but Ali and I are very, very close. Ali, Ali and I even, at one point in time, live together. Those my my family inside, all my parents, my siblings, and everybody. And and Ali knows my, he knew my father. My father was uh, was not a wealthy man, never, but uh, he was a uh, he was a dedicated man. He always wanted the best for his family. As a as an ordinary civil servant, he wanted all of us. First thing was the notion that all of us should go to pri private school. The notion that my kids should be somewhere where they can interact with people. And so I watched this man work every day to ensure that we went to private school. And all of us went to private school. I attended SDA from ABC to, to 12th grade. You know, that's the only high school I went to in Liberia, from kindergarten straight to 12th grade. And then uh, 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 I remember during the war, we had gone free town to seek refuge. And my father, during the course of that refugee life, had to go find a job. Looking all over for means to support his family, and so when you when you when you when you look at this kind of uh, of, of 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 person, how dedicated they are to the world, to their family, and you hear people say we are love like you, we are love the country, half the country I had, and now he's given a chance as president to change the life and condition of the people. He has killed them. He has killed. Them. He's worried about his personal enjoyment. He built his condominium, and so. Musu Stewart on the chat said it best. The legend whose salary is far more than the budget of the whole ministry. The legend who makes about four or five thousand a month. If, 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 if you look at it over a year, five times ten or fifty thousand plus the two months, you're talking about sixty grand a year. Legend who makes sixty thousand dollars a year. 
the, the entire budget of the ministry of the man who manages the ministry is seventeen thousand. So the man. No, Stephen, that's more. excluding all the perks. You gotta, you gotta yeah. remember that. No, I mean, I just gave you raw figures, yeah. raw salary. He makes Correct. fifty, he makes sixty thousand. So the minister makes almost three times plus in salary over what this ministry is getting in terms of budget. So how do you even expect the minister to operate? And then and still we have budget surplus. The minister of finance said there's a surplus. And so how do you say this? How do you really communicate this to Liberia? Like well, Ali, are you there? Mo, are you hearing me? <clears throat> Stephen, thank you. Um, you know, Pastor and Dualu said it right. Yeah, you getting me? Yeah, I'm hearing you guys. You hearing me? Hello? We can hear you. Go ahead. Go we ahead. Can hear Go you. ahead. Good. You getting me? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. You know, yeah, let me say firstly, I don't feel sorry for Ledger Who. Ledger Who has behaved like many of the secret friends around here. Ledger Who, like Pastor said, we know him to be a professional media person. Ledger Who was one of those we all used to admire when he read the news at Radio Veritas. Ledger who under the Ellen Johnson Salif government became uh, director general at LBS until the very last day of that UP government. But this Ledger woman turns out to be like the usual praise singers around when the employees i think it was last month or so employees of the ministry of information were protesting about pay salaries they are some of them making 40 dollars us per month they go over there they pay their way every day after they protested for two days ledger who Rennie instructed sano I think that his name, the assistant minister, to yeah, issue a Sano. statement effectively banning any form of protest anywhere around the Ministry of Information, suppressing the employees there from expressing their grievances. He even instructed that they should not gather in the Charles Bayon Hall to even have meeting to discuss issues that are affecting them and here we are he coming on the radio crying they get budget of seventeen thousand. ledger who real problem is not the budget of seventeen thousand. ledger who real problem is that george we are is not speaking to him and that george we are left him out and carry back and for fun on the trip with him to america he wanted to be there he wanted to be in Qatar. He wanted to be in Morocco. He wanted to be in Egypt. He wanted to be in France as the Minister of Information to collect the fabulous uh, 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 DSA. Unfortunately for him, his mayor, Eugene Nangwe, is now playing the role of a trinity. Eugene Nangwe is now effectively the Minister of, of State for presidential affair he is the minister of information slash the, the the spokesman for the president and he is also the head of maritime just to pose so when you hear him talking about people just opposing themselves yeah he's referring to people like eugene Nambe and the others that they've just opposed themselves to the extent that they have usurped his function from the ministry of information and so Yep. It has become useless for Samuel Pwer to remit the small $17,000 they have in the budget to them. That is his problem. He doesn't care about the employees there. When the employees complain that we have we, the $40 we're making, 
We're not making it. We're not getting it in time. He said, you're shut up. You don't have right to protest. We will not even give you the privilege to sit in the hall to have your meeting, to discuss your grievances, and come up with solution or recommendations to the ministry. But he has now been sidelined. Look, if you are a professional person and your ministry is underfunded to such degree mm -hmm. that your ministry cannot function, what are you doing there? Thank you. Also, besides being minister, you ain't want to get a job. Uh -uh. But Ledger, we will know you. You are with Veritas. After the April 6th war, when, 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 not the April 6th war, when, when Taylor got angry one day and sent Jote to, to loot the whole Veritas, you went to Radio Moravia. You and Ray Parker and, and Queen City and the other guy, or uh, uh, what his name, the, the CDC Ghana in the States, John, we are calling him R. J. Radio Moravia, everybody will rush to listen to you people. So what has happened? To that professionalism in you that you feel suppressed that Eugene Nangwe and the others are just a po positioning themselves then you squeezing yourself there but the guy will not leave because he earns up to six thousand that they somebody from the ministry leaked their whole payroll structure yeah. the other day yeah ledger who can leave because he gotta be collecting it that crying, what ledger will cry on that radio? He mean it. He's only telling the president, you're not talking to me. I should have gone on the trip. If he meant what he was saying, ledger who would have stood with the employee, he would have represented their interest to the president and to Mr. Samuel Twe. So Samuel Twe sees no near giving him budget because he is not working as the minister of information. Mr. Eugene Nangwe is doing our work. Mr. Eugene Nangwe is also, even, even the, 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 the press secretary, do you hear him this time? The only time I heard him, but, um, issue one, funny statement was when I, when, I, when I stated the number of days the president went for and all the things they were lying about. So I don't feel sorry for Ledger Wu. Yeah, Ledger Wu be talking. If he's serious, he will resign. If Ledger was serious, let him resign. One other time, last day, he was on the radio, lying like hell. And I called on the show, I told him, I said, Minister, Minister, you are lying from both sides of your mouth. The information you gave me there is not true. These are the real facts. And after the show, we met on one occasion. He said, oh, Mo, you my own brother. You didn't want to call on the radio and say I was lying. I said, but you are lying. So... Let him go for a place to sit down. If the really kept touching him, let him resign. When they assigned me to Grand Crew, I knew it was beyond uh, below my professional standard. I knew that it was denigrating to my professional standard. What I did? I resigned. I left from there. Take your job. I died today. I uh, yeah, leaving. I'm leaving good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. And, and that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Because when we when we grew up in the nineties, listening to Radio Veritas and listening to to Marco Francis, one of the voices we always wanted to hear was Ledger Wu Renning, Ledger Wu Marco Simoni. You know what they used to commentate the football game, Ledger Wu Marco Simoni Renning. He and Ray Innocent Butulizi Paco. You know they had his football name, and every evening we will crew and long start playing. We want to hear these guys talking. They said that you will reduce or you will lose your integrity. So the people say when you are hungry and you don't have integrity, the first thing you sell is your integrity. <laughs> the first thing you sell is your integrity. That's why we really respect people like Mo Ali there. In the country of Liberia where it was difficult to find a job, when Ali's job was threatened, when they wanted him to go grand crew in one village, because people felt that he was an opposition man, the worst punishment they could give him was to ridicule him by reducing his, his portfolio. What did Ali do? Ali was not at the top level of government. Ali was a director of the Ministry of Finance. Ali resigned and left. 
Five years later, Ali is still critical in the opposition. He's still living in case I in school and everything is happening. That these people will at certain level still be begging for government jobs, still be hanging on to George Weah. Look at the handshake at the airport. We are shaking hands that somebody didn't even know. But let me go to Pia. Pia will give us a more nuanced perspective about this because Pia has been within the corridor of, 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 of communication, both at the national and, and at the Ministry of Information. So Pia, let, let, let hear from you. Um, so in early, now the first quarter of uh, 2010, I got shifted from the Ministry of Gender and Development, where I was Assistant Minister for Planning and Administration, to the Ministry of Information, where I served as um, Deputy Minister for Public Affairs. Uh, if I recount since I left that office, Asi Jackson served there, Eugene Fagon served there, Yalawa Tompo is there currently. Uh, so in 20... Yeah, as you know, the car we have for Yalawa, did you say we were using? No, the car Eugene was using was a car that was given to me from the executive mansion, not from the Ministry of Information. So, okay. yeah, so there's a lot for Ledger Who to unpack. Because uh, what he has put out is inadequate. At least there's a need for clarification. And and I, and I thought you and Mo would have brought it up because both of you worked at the Ministry of Finance. So when the budget is passed, and they say this is the government new budget has been passed, what is referred to as a ministry's budget under no circumstance, absolutely under no circumstance can be 17,000. Because the budget of the ministry will include, first of all, the salary, and if allowances are still being used, the salaries and allowances of all employees of the ministry. In 12 months time, all salaries and allowances of employees of the Ministry of Information would be maybe 70 times 17,000. The minister, like somebody said, a salary could amount to maybe a gross of 60,000 per annum, and that would be somewhere below it. It cannot fit within 17,000. The ministry does run generator, they have uh, maybe a bus or buses to take people to work. It requires servicing. It requires uh, uh, gasoline or diesel fuel. It cannot fit within 17,000. So when Ledger who says the Ministry of Information budget is 17,000, in my mind, as somebody who worked there before, will require further explanation. Because 17,000 cannot and is not the budget of the Ministry of Information. Now, if he's trying to say that away from all these, um, how do I call it, re recurrent expenditures, all these administrative stuff, in addition to it, the only programming money he has in the ministry is 17,000, then, then the conversation starts from there. But that wouldn't make sense also because how can the government programming money for its spokes ministry be 17,000? 17,000 could be probably a monthly expenditure in terms of programming. So, like I said, so much so is required to be unpacked because that comment by Ledger who running is insufficient. And because there's a digital age, I don't know whether the government is still doing the open budget in each, uh, initiative. Maybe if somebody Google, or check something, you find out what the Ministry of Information current budget is. And I'm sure if you find that up, it will not be 17,000. That's one. Two, 
The legend who did not have to speak for you to know that there's a problem with he and the government at the Ministry of Information. And I, 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 as a member of the government communication team, like I said, when I went to the Ministry of Information and then forward to the executive mansion, I worked with Ledger Wu, UJ, and the rest of the folks on the government communication team. And in as much as Ledger Wu has always been a guy who loves we are, who are being we are closer, there's one thing I would give to him. And I guess that could be something that could be haunting him now. Nobody can tell me, nobody, I mean, absolutely nobody can tell me that there's been any time you see Ledger Who maybe wearing the t shirt of a political party or the beret of a political party and doing the things everybody do normally running the party headquarters. Days now. And if you want to carry a set of that in a government run by we are, then you're already in trouble. Because that's not something they will take kindly to. And Eugene Fargon used to use that again, Ledger Who running, that he was not a red man of the information. He says he's a professional man, he's not a party man. And black. Eugene Fargon ran with that several times. Knowing the kind of person we are, yes, he's been a friend to Ledger Who, but knowing the kind of person he is, we are, may have been listening. And he may not be happy. That Ledger Wu is not having the party identity. That he's carrying himself like some professional who just want to do a professional piece of work and does not have time for party business. Oh, oh. Because, because it is it is it is it is strange. What's that really? Yeah. I want my thought to get lost. No, you, you, you will flow. You ask for the budget. I just Google it. They said five million in the special 2021 budget and 11 million in the current 2022 budget respectively for the no, that, 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 that can be correct that's what i'm looking at here no it can be correct okay yeah it okay. can be correct it can be correct the visual information will not get up to even two million the budget always being one point something million one point this million it can even be not a top of five or eleven million so, yeah, that's why I was saying my thought process. I don't know where I, where I was, I was lending. Um, so what I was saying, so he's not, he, he has not been that kind of. You are talking person. about a party person. He doesn't wear yeah. beret to go to party headquarters yeah, in Union he, Fargo. He, he's not that kind of party person, and therefore they will not like it. So it, it, it was a kind of strange to me. Now, the president is on a trip out of the country for 48 days, like Stephen said earlier. And your Minister of Information is not there. And the communication people you chose to include on the trip out of the Minister of Information, the truth of the matter is they can't do the job. So, okay, but can't do the job. So, I can't do the job. So, once you keep the main guy who's supposed to do the job away, and the rest of the people you carry can do the job, but there's someone on the trip also with an experience who knows the job, who can do the job, then you have a situation of the interventions that you saw my brother and friend Eugene Nambe making, which you, don't, which you don't hold him responsible for. The president runs the country. The president has his government. The president is making the trip. The president chooses not to carry a means of information. Maybe communication issues come out on the, while they're on the trip. The president does not trust his press secretary to do it. He does not trust the deputy press secretary to do it. So you ask the maritime commission to do it because you know he will do it. And the maritime commission will not tell the president, no, I'm not doing it. He's going to bring your information minister. No, you can't do that. And in that, in that case, I cannot say and I cannot be of any opinion that Eugene, in any way or form, is on a mind in Ledger who ran it. If Ledger who has been on a mind, he's been on a mind by the person who gave him a job. The same person he declared to be a good man, a decent man, you can't do this to him, you can't do that. The, the place you and I at Dwalo, Stevie, everybody. People resign here for very common things. Gavin Bailey, the, 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 the man that he just talked about, Gavin Bailey, that man really resigned, he didn't go in. Not to imagine he running an office, and the office has been so much overlooked. The office has been so much disrespected. And that person will say, 
I can't abandon the president. No, I can't do that to the president. So no, I, I have not crossed my mind to resign. That's coward. Coward. Yeah, that's where the conversation for me falls into a different category again. You've not been given a chance to do the job. You just said by your own lips that they gave you 17000 for your budget. You just said that even with the small size of the budget, since June, within December, you said since June, no allotment for whatever you have as a budget has been made. Then you have seen that the president makes a trip. Jesus was in a way for 40 days and 40 nights. The president made a trip for 48 days and 48 nights. He decided to even overtake Jesus. And he didn't kill you. And then the general is asking you, but are you not thinking about it? And he said, no, I can't resign. I can't do that. And then the next thing that come out is singing hallelujah chorus. He's a nice man. He's a good man. He loved the country. He, you know, he, he makes a lot of things out in the interview that, 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 that even on a court, the actual message he wanted to send out. And then somebody was calling my attention to the fact that if you look at the picture at the airport, He's there, the president is trying to shake a hand. You see that the president is not even putting the hand in, and you, you're shaking somebody's hand that got a big connection. But someone said, The president, I know you're looking at my brother, you're looking at family who's standing way beyond. Family that's struggling, not in the front of the line. So when you're shaking my hand, do I do you got to be looking me in the face? I look you in the face. You can't be shaking my hand, look so. That disrespect. Somebody tells me that what will happen, I haven't seen that. But then there's a problem. And until you stand up to say, this is not how it should be. So I'm calling it a quit. You say you've been bruised. You've been, you, your repetition, this, that, that. That repetition could be further damage if the president is provoking you to resign. And you don't resign. And, you then you you and, and fire you. Then the real repetition issue comes because then the record has been made that you were fired before. So he has to read between the lines. And even as old people for a ministry, I guess, as well, listen, just as I thought, because I went there before, nobody was agreeing with him that the ministry budget is in 17,500. So he need to come forward to clarify what did he mean? What, what was he referencing when he talked about the 17,500? What exactly does that 17,500 represent as far as when the ministry of information is concerned? But it cannot be the information ministry's budget because that money is something that if you have four press conferences, or five, six, seven press conferences, you will exhaust it. Now, one of the things that knew in the past, if the president was going on a trip and Louis Brown is asked to be on the trip, Louis Brown will process his own money for the trip in terms of buying plane ticket, the DSA, for his minister's budget. He said that letter who ministry does not have the budget so much so, and there's like the margin not ready to cover his cost, and therefore that would be a reason why he didn't go. But then somebody will ask the question, then how come Waka for Fana went? So if the president of office could cover up Waka for Fana, assuming mutual information does not have the money, it means the president of office will also cover Ledger who running if they want a ledger who running on the trip. So it's deep, but on the surface, just anybody looking at it, you know that there's a problem between the Minister of Information and the office of the president who appointed him. Something is not jabbing. And he's not standing up to say, this is unacceptable. That's not what I came to do here. I'll call it a quit. He said he loved most the president. The most part. Yeah, he can hear about the president. The president loved the country. The president loved the people. <laughs> Even in the midst of just going on a voyage for 40, 48 days, 48 nights, he said the man loved the country. Even returning, coming back and goes on the altar. And That's the credit. The altar, calling for shot people, there's that, all on the altar. You still say the men love the country. Following all these pastors who are misleading him, as a winger and others, who are taking in the wrong direction, you say the men love the country. So much time how they take pay, Leji, you say the men love the country. They put money in the budget for the RIA role. That role is stuck there because a bulk of the money has been shared between people, including Magida, before he resigned. The money gone. You say the man loved the country. Money was, was, was secure for the Lofa role. Two things happening out of politics because he's afraid that while the Southeast that he comes from doesn't have a payroll, 
to see the road progressing from the lower end will make his own people go against him. And therefore, the obligation on the part of the government, which is to pay for robbing all those kind of things so that the money that is available can start a road, it can happen. All of that happening in Lofa is like that, up to this level. But even his own officials have been faced with threat there. But what my brother Twer experienced recently, you still see the men love the country. I mean, with all the thoughts and all government people dying under his eyes and nothing happened, you see the men love the country. When he came to power, just about three months, between three or six months, he built for the seven condominium. You saw it with your own eye, You see the men love the country. You have got a different definition of love, and not the one which your exactly. my exactly. friends taught you. Exactly. My guy friends they taught you agape love. It reflects in people when they do love the country. You my brother, you're a friend. I hardly want to talk about you. But there's an issue that we need to talk about. And if I should have a final say on this, so we can continue for the other brothers who come with additional comment later, who is to ask you to step aside. You're not doing yourself any good. You got experience in terms of how long you've worked. You went to one of the best universities in, in the UK in that particular field with that expertise. You should be able to work anywhere. Don't allow we are them to put you around. Yeah, like you said, you don't want to be the other poor when you leave the government. He's not putting money in the government. You don't have to put more on him, but you can walk away. Exactly. Other people have walked away before. Ellis Coffey walked away. I've never heard him one day doing any poker or something talking to we are putting more on him. He walked away and he's living professionally. That I call him walk away. I mean, when he say anything, say he walk away from Maritime. A lot of people have walked away when the new kick or that when the new that compatibility was no longer there. You too, with the expertise, with the education, with everything you have, can walk away. You've been disrespected, you've been humiliated, you've been ill-treated, you've been maltreated. Are you not seeing it, my brother? You are the you are the spokesman of the look, Stephen, when, when, when I was press secretary. Eugene is a smart brother. And I, I like Eugene. Between, I can tell anybody. I like Eugene. The press secretary had the opportunity to meet with the president every morning. The Minister of Information did not have similar opportunity. You know why Eugene did? The relationship between Eugene and I have been strengthened where he started from. Eugene Lee has so money every day, Monday through Friday. I get to the executive mansion before my briefing time with EJS. As a result, I will go for the briefing. He and I will go brief together. And President said he was very satisfied with that because I was the first time seeing it. When Louise was there and other people were there, she didn't see that. But when Eugene has this information, I pray, every time she left her phone, my briefing time come, by the time they were door open, then she see Eugene. Then she said, with joke about it. Ah, Eugene working here now. <laughs> so, it's just a way of us joining because you know communication. But yeah, this yeah, way, let, me, let, me, let me hold you there. Let me go to Tualu. Yeah. Yeah. Tualu, so the point uh, I, no, that, that's a point I wanted to make for which I was saying that because there was a question Clarence kept asking you, uh, Ledger who you are the minister of information. You need to be in talk with the president every day. You should talk to the president every day. The president should talk to you every day. He didn't answer that question. That's the point I wanted to establish. That when you're in those positions, it's true that you should have unhindered access to the president, that you should talk to the president every day, because that's the only way you'll be informed in the way you should be to communicate why you have to communicate. That's the point I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you. Dwalo, let me come to you and 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 and, and, and to piggyback on uh, to piggyback on what Pia had said about stepping aside. You know, I mean they they the the best you can do if you if you think that you're being downplayed, you're being treated as an outcast, you've been treated as somebody who's, whose whose uh, contribution is not valued. Even, you know, like where we work, if you go to work and and you think that your contribution at the office is not valued, you walk away. You walk away. You know, but to see people catapult themselves into into being beggars for public service jobs. Only simply because they've created this kind of impression that without government they cannot survive. What do you say to men like Ledger 
resign, find a place in private sector, or just what what would you say? You know, if 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 you, if you were the asking him, yeah. Stevie, I want to say this to you. Uh, I had an uncle in Buchanan, my mother's younger brother. He will always say this, and I will translate for people who don't speak Basa. I will say this. He will say, Opa me chen derebo, in ze mi yon gabo nyo in king king, yen kpa nyo do kini, wa mo furisi kana kana bo nyo. Basically, what he was saying, you must first make yourself a man before you follow another man. When a man tries to belittle you, you're why already you, a man for yourself. Why are you interpreting? Yes, TV say you pass up, man. Why TV can't interpret for us? Let's see. Right? Oh, that you interpret for us. So the other yeah, my son is interpreting for us. But let's see now, Pia. Now, I'm going to say this. Look. There's something happening in Liberia. I'm mean, happening in Liberia. It's happening for a very long time. We have weaponized government job, and we literally hold it over people's head for their livelihood. A lot of people cannot stand on themselves on their own two feet because they think government job is be all and take all and everything to it. That's why I tell people all the time. I can never take government job. Under no circumstance, maybe in a advisory capacity, but to take an official position, I can never do it. Because the issue is, until we gravitate from this level, where people believe that when they hold a statutory position, when they get an elected position, that the government belongs to them more than it belongs to everybody else. Look, people that let you be running. This is why I hear when people say I'm educated. Look, I'm a high school graduate. I'm extremely proud of me being a high school graduate. It's more sufficient for me than anything else. People take degrees. Oh, man, I went to this great school. If you cannot transition from this so-called book you know into production where you can protect you and your family, people will always look down upon you. Let your reader can read all the news he wants to read. He can do whatever he wants to do until he can act out a living responsibly in the private sector in Liberia. This kind of nonsense will continue to happen to him. A lot of seditions, they're literally swallowing the spit. They're men who, they're being emasculated in Liberia because they must hold a position. This is lunacy. I tell people this all the time. You must put yourself into a higher socioeconomic position before you take any government job in Liberia. At this point, you will be a free man, a free woman. Why will you allow yourself to be put into this position? Randy knows he's not functioning. He himself saying that he's extremely hungry. This is from his own mouth. Empty, empty bag cannot stay. Yet he continues to hold that position. President Weah is extremely vindictive. Everybody knows this. If he doesn't like you, he's going to do everything he can to make you feel like a child. He's done it over and over and over again. Yet people continue to take themselves and lay themselves down before this man. What are we doing to ourselves in our country? This is why most government officials are extremely nearsighted. When they are in government position, they will just sit there and think this is all to it. Are you putting yourself in a position where when you leave government, you can at least get something for yourself? I'm not saying steal government money. There are so many opportunities in Liberia. But in many instances, people believe they must work in this government before they become something for themselves. Why can't Rennie go out there and set up his own radio station if he has his skill? There's so many things you can do. Read a book. I don't care. Do something else. Do something else. Look, on the early Johnson Sullivan administration, I was in Liberia for the duration, almost the entire duration of that of that of that administration. And I'll say this to people, I could have getting almost any job because I was dealing with the people almost every single time. But I was not interested because I could make thirty, forty thousand dollars in the private sector. So why would I go to government? Because you have to steal. Look, there was a time and the audience were live. People would call me Pupu Opa in Liberia, and I was so proud of that name. Because I know what I was getting out of it. We have to find a way to develop a private sector so we can give the men in the country dignity. But we refuse to do this. We refuse to do this. Look, this is one thing I told Honorable Boakai, and I told him this. Very, we spoke for almost over an hour. I told Honorable Boakai, I want one thing from you. Nothing. It's an opportunity to create a private sector in Liberia so we can give the young people dignity in that country. They don't have to wait for government job. So the likes of Legendary Rennie can say, you know what, Ron? I don't have to be at the, the ministry. I can go to Dwalu Incorporated and become a, a communication director there. This is what we want for our society. Mm -hmm. President we are is destroying this country. Look, I will say this to young people in the country. You cannot love a man more than you love the livelihood of your family. You cannot love a man more than your own wife and your own children. You have to love your country far above anything else that is out there until we can create a viable society. What the likes of my, my, my man Kali in, 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 in Bunjaman can have a decent job. He can self-actualize entirely in rubber sports. But we, we have a society where it seems like 
almost everybody, almost everybody, the entire aspiration is to go to government, is to go, go to government. Look, my mother would say they need waste your money for there is no effort in you. Let me give it to you guys. Thank you. Thank let, you me just, let me just share information to follow up post on SN on the cake before we continue. Hey, so, 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 so somebody sent me what is supposed to be the budget. You you guys are the financial pool you have been on. So in 2021, they say actual 2021 actual budget was 2.8 million for the Ministry of Information. In 2021, then they say SP budget. What does that mean? PSIP. No, again, SP. After the actual for 2021, then they have another line altogether that say SP. PSIP. It should be PSIP. Real special special budget or why? I don't know. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a private sector investment project, something like that. Public sector. I mean. So 2021, the SP budget for the same ministry was one point. Oh, so, so that, that SP budget was the special, was the one after they did the recast. The recast, okay. Yeah. So when they did the recast, it came to uh 1.1 million instead of the 2.8 million they're supposed to have. Then yeah, they, uh, after the recast. Yeah, then the same 2020, 2021, they say SP or turn. So you mean you mean SB or P? SP, S as in P, I mean S as in Steven and P as in PR. Okay, okay, yeah. So, so the return it from it that, it so that SP budget, then they say SP or turn. For or turn, it became 1.5 million. So the or turn was the was after all of the, the, the stuff happened now, it was based so the on actual the, money that, yeah, that, that okay. the actual money that actually reached to the to the to the Ministry of Information. Okay, then they are 2022. That ledger we made reference to say 2022 budget is 17,000. Their 2022 budget is 4.1 I, I million. 4.1 million. Yeah, it's 4.1 million. And their 2022 budget is projected at 3.6 million, while 2024 is projected at 3.5. So you see, that's the reason why I said he has to come clear because when you get throw out to the public, when everybody so, so, yeah, you know, you they are, like for instance, compensation there and uh, and uh, goods and services. Those are so. Pia, the 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 the, 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 the budget is, there. Know, one minute more. One minute. That's the ministry's budget. If you look in the budget that is passed, what are you calling for this for that? It comes as the budget. True. So when you want but, to get, when you want to tell the public that your budget is seventeen thousand, which is different from this, then you gotta be so clear to say. I think I think it was the operation. I think it was special operation, like how you, you guys used to have the uh, the covert. He need to still come clear because <laughs> then there's a yeah. He need to come clear. He's a communicator. Look, Stevie. I mean, Mo. When you, when you're a communicator, you're not communicating well. It's a problem. That's yeah, you need why, doubts. That's the reason why Samuel Twelve and all the other people got to give the ministry of information a chance to do their work. You remember when Samuel Twelve talked about weaponizing the press? No communicator will say that because they know the implication. What Chamber Two was talking about, benevolent dictator, no communication will say that because they know the implication. But for poking that open their mouth because they know they know small English and they can talk, blah, 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 the Twitter, you will get thrown up because you want to talk, you don't know the communication implication. That's why you must give the people who are in the area, who are in the center, the chance to do what they know best. So it's the same thing that comes to the ledger with yourself. You can just come to the public and say my budget is 17,000 when you know that that thing is that clear to anybody. You got to speak like a communicator so we know what exactly are you talking about. So yeah, I, I mean, and you're right, Pia, because um, if you if you even look at if you even look at it from uh, from as a layman, seventeen thousand dollars for the entire Ministry of Information for a year is is is. <laughs> it's not realistic. I mean, you know. Yeah, but Steven, I'm, I'm seeing people saying he said operation. Yeah, so budget and... they, you know they have the you know normally the information ministry have this covert budget blah 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 this thing they do to engage they media. Call it, they call it information intelligence. Exactly. But the uh, point there, the point there is, I'm not sure Ledger who con it concern much is the size of the operational budget. I think his concern is they're not getting it. The concern is the big team that is that they're not if getting any money small, from the Ministry of Finance. Because you are in, say, I think since June or July. That's July. They have not got a cent from the ministry. So 
That means that the only thing they are getting is their the salary. salary and goods and services. Yeah, goods and services. So that means that the ministry cannot do any extra thing. They can't go in the community. They can't do all those one, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, we, 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 we talk this thing much. And I am happy that GMB has said, if I win election, there will be no ministry of information. Exactly. There will be no ministry of information because... The okay, is, more, more, one minute, one minute. So I just, I just looked through the budget, right? So the only thing that carries seventeen thousand year under the current budget, which is seventeen thousand two hundred, not even seventeen thousand five hundred, is operational expenses. So maybe that's why you were talking. Now about. why you were talking about that? Why is it operational? They say operational, operational expense. But they, they say my operational, but not say my ministry budget. <laughs> the one is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something though. It's intentional. Uh, it's intentional. Ledger of Rennie is trying to send a message. It's intentional. But oh, when he doesn't realize it, it's going to backfire on him. Because he's distorting the truth in a way that's going to anger President Weir. You know President Weir is very, very shallow. By saying that, oh, hey, the man, I'm giving you your money, you will see. You will take that person again. But I love I, that. I, I, I agree with you, Duardo. I agree with you. That's yeah, he was sending a message. I think the core message there is that they, they've been abandoned by the Minister of Finance. And yes, Ford. exactly. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So a lot of things happen in Stevie. If you also look to web web more, you have mentioned media intelligence and blah 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 blah. It's zero. The council is completely. Yeah, they can't try to cut most of that thing off. The last time they had media intelligence budget, it was 275,000. Since that time, media intelligence pay is <laughs> zero, 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 zero. <laughs> so part of more let me hear for you. You be quiet. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, something uh, uh was said and 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 by, by Honorable Pia. I don't know if you all read what front page Africa wrote about Liberia Integrity Watch. They raised a, a, a red flag on the allocation of 156.7 million to ministry and, and institution for the fiscal year of 2022. And none of them have made a report on the amount of money they have received, and and Honorable Pia spoke from from an information that was also sent to him, which talk about uh, I think four point one million and three point something million for the Ministry of Information. Now, if on paper, on paper, on document, if they are saying this money is for the Information Ministry, and the Minister comes out and say no i'm not receiving this amount this is the amount that they allocated it raises a red flag so so where is this money going something Dwalu said at the beginning of the show and this one he said the, the lawmakers have never been audited but they take huge amount of money that there, there is no accountability in liberia no accountability. How are these people running this government? Is it a private entity? Because even if I run my private entity, I need to be audited. I mean, I need to be audited on my expenditure and what have and, and what all that I spending through the years. Now, something the information minister said. He said, "Empty belly can't stand." In Liberian community. We have a saying when we say empty belly can stay. We know the meaning. That means what's supposed to come to me is not come to me. How can I be effective? So the bottom line here is like uh, uh, said, a communicator should be able to communicate. And he being a journalist, what he said today, or whether it, it, it was this morning, is signal a lot of things that is going on. And his ministry is not only the ministry, being a victim of the corruption and and the money laundering that is going on. Because how can you talk about giving this ministry four point something million, but the minister is telling you, say, I'm not receiving it. You got another entity in government that haven't paid their workers for seven months. You got teachers striking because their salary being deducted without any explanation. Pastor Mo, Pastor Mo. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Just one second. You cannot blame anybody. If you're running the entity, you got to provide a expense report. So if you're not providing that report, why are you blaming anybody else? If you don't get the money, provide an expense report. Exactly. But they're all trying to shield President Weah. They're trying to shield Weah. They're trying to make Weah know that Weah. Look, it's like Thank you. the spider web and forgetting the spider. Thank you. So you want to blame everybody, but you're not blaming the president. So it's the spider web, but not the spider. Thank you. That's, that's Thank you. Every time they try to protect we are in this whole conundrum of of of, of corruption and and, 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 and and the misapplication of state resources it backs up so that that, that that whole interview for when the military prison president we are for me that whole interview <laughs> why you conclude let me ask this question and you can conclude on this let me ask this everybody can take a stab at this with listening to ledger how many other ministries and agencies across government do we think this is happening and they're afraid to come up so, Pastor, you conclude on that, then, then Ali, then Pia, then Dwali. I think all of the ministry, if you look at the the the, the information that have been placed in the front page Africa magazine, or, or in the front page Africa, or, or, let me just read a portion of that as I conclude. Is it a clean civil society organization? Integrity Watch. Liberia has raised an alarm over the allocation of US $156.7 million in the draft national budget for fiscal year 2022 to, to several uh, 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 governmental ministry and institutions with all the provision of expenditure report to the national legislatures in keeping with the public financial management PFM, Law of Liberia. So what is this telling us? Where are these money going? You're coming up with huge budget. You're coming up with huge, huge budget. But how is it being spent for 2022? Now you're about to go into 2023. How is it going to be spent? So all of these officials, I think all of the ministry and agency are all victims, but people are afraid. And the reason why I think they are afraid, they don't have a means to fly out. They don't have They're not to victims. They're accomplices. They're yeah, not yeah. victims. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Ali, Ali, I mean, Ali, let me hear from you. The last time I was in Monrovia, I, I visited the Ministry of Finance. Um, The Ministry of Finance were more like a ghost town. By 2 p.m., everybody was running home. And this is supposed to be the nucleus. The Ministry of Finance is is the nucleus of the government. It is the, it is the engine. And you're a student of science, so you know what the nucleus is. But if the Ministry of Finance by itself is still is still having that same kind of issue that is across government, what do you expect that whole trickle down effect on other entities? What is happening at the Ministry of Information? Is it the general thing happening across the country? I see somebody say Ministry of Steve, that 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 scenario that scenario is is everywhere. Um during the last government, when you went to serious ministries, agencies, I say serious because they were serious when we had a serious government. Um, you will realize people at work. And even if on the day you didn't have much work to do, you will sit at your workplace. Well, I find that you have to go in the morning because... Um, First, they had the fingerprint, uh, the biometric, something that you have yep. to put your yeah, fingerprint. We, we introduced the biometrics. Yep. And I thought it was joke, right? People got lit two, three times. They cut their salaries because they prorated the salaries per day. This time, Ministry of Finance, as a matter of fact, it's just few people that are doing the work. And so hmm. there's no work for the others to do. They just sit home. People go there one time in two weeks. But that is not only with the Ministry of Finance, but because the Ministry of Finance is, has become so dominant, it is having a spillover effect on almost all of the other ministries and agencies. Correct. You see people say they're working. They just go there once in a while because... If I am not going today, I can tell you, still in the next one, we please sign Jeremiah name. You know, that's what they're doing now. This is the reason why government has become so ineffective 
and non-functional. You 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 go like somebody talk about water and sewer. The new star is water comes for two days and goes for two weeks. So everybody now has to have some kind of big barrel in your place. Well, it can't we follow all your things. Yeah, that this morning the water came, so I had to fill up everything because the people at the minish at the what at water and sewer they're not even taking pay. And guess what? The current managing director says he will just employ so many people there so that whoever will take over water and sewer will have a very serious problem. Water it's not the current sewer. managing director, these are CDC agents that are sent to this ministry. The yeah, but I system think... from the CDC government. <laughs> That's their policy now. Yeah. The, 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 the guy said he will employ so many people. What do you see what's supposed to be contributing to the budget? Yeah. Meaning that they're supposed to generate their own salaries. And they're supposed to contribute to the budget. But guess what? They are like After thing. two, three, four, five months, they got to beg someone to, to pay them one more. Who goes to work under that condition? The other day we were on the radio and we were in uh, a debate with one assistant minister. And somebody from Water and Sewer kept sending me a message. Tell the man, say we are Water and Sewer. We take pay here for five months. He's lying. He said they're paying government. I mean, they're paying people. And this is a guy, assistant minister, who was there saying, Oh, more I need that. They were collecting VV money. They were collecting gas. Tape. Guess what? When I was entering the studio, the man. The man is riding this new Toyota, brand new one that cost more than 50000 The car was on. And when he and myself left the studio, the car was still beating. But he had the audacity to sit on the radio and say, he's getting only 25 gallons of gas or more. So the question there was, but how can your car be there for one a whole hour? It can't even go off. Now you see somebody here saying, check out Ministry of Transport. You go to Ministry of Youth and Sports. That used to be very active because they had to they, they had to, to conduct oversight on the TVET programs all over the place, in Tottenham, in Morovia, and other places. Dead. You don't even hear about the TVET the program. The Water Waterway Project collapsed. Anymore. <laughs> the, 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 the training of young cadres, students, interns from schools, that one is done. Kapu finish. Oh, sugar wasting yeah. just there now. They sit in more and they get a little salary. Other people go there, they just sit there. You see somebody before it was not possible to be a civil servant and you get job somewhere else. Yeah. Right now they get civil servant and who, because they're not getting anything. They had to go they to West to find a second listen. job. Oh, more. Yeah. More. Let me, uh, let, me, uh, let, me let me ask you this question. I, I'm, I'm really reliably informed that since we are returned to the country, he hasn't been back to work. For what? Go but, to work for what? But we are, it doesn't matter no where we are, go. he's present in the country. <laughs> the man no good work the after the season. Bec yes, oh. exactly. And guess what? Before Dralu comes in, why we are go to work? When you have an old lady who held the mark that day and say, we are the native woman son that why we the native women then will galvanize them. Really? That old lady was holding that back, talking that thing. So the other people that who their son and daughter that were well, people children. More but more you're missing it, you're missing the issue though. That old lady is put in that position. Look, before I used to blame people, you know, George Orwell said this best. He said, you know, people who elect corrupt politicians are not victims of their accomplices. And, and I used to believe that to an extent. But the more you think about the psychology of poverty, it puts our people in a position, a disadvantageous position, that if they're forced to behave in a certain way. So I don't blame them entirely. Look, I was in Liberia about two weeks ago, and, 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 I, and I made it my duty to literally visit most of the ministries and the government agencies. Not only are they not functioning, they are almost literally closing down. And somebody mentioned the finance ministry. I don't know who, who mentioned yeah, it. I, I the finance ministry it is literally the oil that greases every single other ministry. If the finance ministry is almost entirely dormant, it's not functioning, what do you expect to the other locations? Yeah. You know, I continue to tell young people, leadership is not a child's play thing. 
It's not a joking matter. Look, say what you will about Ellen Johnson, Sully. There was an issue with me and the Ellen Johnson administration. But you could see the progression of our society in the right direction. They had their thoughts. But when you take an entire society and you place it in the hands of neophytes, individuals who have no business near responsible operations, and you expect the fruits of diligence, of prudence, of duty, of hard work. It doesn't work that way. It takes commitment. It takes so much more to be able to produce at a very high level. President Weir does not want to be president. Look, I'm not saying this because I'm not, I, don't, I don't support the man. I'm saying this because this man, he's too us in so many ways. I don't want this position. I cannot produce at this level. I don't want to be here yet. People continue to force him in that position. Look, the only way the likes of Tway, the Tway that were driving Kia Moto here in Minnesota, most of these guys that could barely make more than thirty dollars an hour in this country. They go to Liberia. This is the only location now where they believe they can become ministers in this location. I will continue to say this: if you continue to tour with your future, we can joke around, we can go up and down and joke around. We will continue to die as a society. Every single human development indicator in Liberia continues to go down. This is not a joking matter. Look, it baffles me that our country has not employed it yet. The reason why is because we have a very highly illiterate population. If our people's minds continue to grow, if deportation increases in our country, there could be enclaves or gang that could destabilize. Right. We have a yeah. 2000 man army. They cannot protect that country. We need leadership. No. I'll give it to you, brother. Pia, how much other area across government do we is this happening? Uh huh. I see somebody say the Ministry of Education, Instruction Department is very poor in, 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 in terms of supervision. The DMI, uh, the Ministry of uh, Instruction, have not visited the tech in the past five years. So, yeah, so, so but, but, it, but, it, but it, they, I mean, nobody needs to say where we think it's happening. Like the Dwaro said from the beginning, the Minister of Information who it's a spokesman for the government confirmed that already. He said yeah. there's this issue of just opposition. Yeah. So it's not just about him and his entity. If the Ministry of Information says that, it's, it's an across government situation. And, and nobody need to tell you that. Look at look at look at look at where they why they have all the mess in communication. I can't agree with John from where somewhere you're representing. You're making policy statement. And nobody will say. Oh, they're not, they're not legend. They're not wait for legend. Would I get a carol? They will take it. Siku Kalasko will have no regard for the Ministry of Information and the Office of the Press Secretary. He yeah, just he running around, the president everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, running around doing communicative things. He's just doing that. He doesn't care. Yeah, Any tone, that. Dick and Harry is a communication person in the government. So legend would right in our in our sense, just a position all over the place. Right? Yeah, the whole time, yeah. <laughs> So the, 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 it's, it's, it's a big problem, and the best the best brains to listen to on this are people who've been there of recent, people who are already there. So more lives there. When more says to us what is happening across government, we have to accept it. Dwalu was just there, and he said on purpose he visited government ministries to see what is happening. Look, they're gonna work at the we had, and you and you saw it, Stephen. I had to be leaving from the executive mansion between 10 to 10 30 every working day. Before I reach your Parker corner in Broadway, it's after 11. Yeah, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. PM. But that's what I'm talking about because everybody, everybody who knows who Ellen Johnson Sally was, you pass yeah. in 9 10 in the night, the whole president just come for stay parking there, she's in the office. Yeah. A bulk of the other people had a chance to go home. But the security people, the protocol, the press secretary, the national security advisor, you cannot leave the office until the president leaves. Then guess what? You have to come early every day because early Johnson's salary is an early bird. Yeah. Sometimes you run into the office at 8 o'clock. There are times 7 30. She jumped to Ministry of Labor, jumped to the other ministry. Minister panicking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got it. Somebody went to the ministry court and said, Oh, the president here. Yeah. And they're looking for a story to, to explain why they were not there. So there was that motivation. President, we are not leaving here until 12 o'clock. What's supposed to make the minister scared to say, I said, go to work at 8 o'clock? President, we are going almost 12 o'clock. Before 3 30, the president just come off Sunday, you're going by home. Yeah. What's going to make somebody sit in office until 6 o'clock? So 
it's, 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 not, not, nothing is working, right? And all the guys are doing, like, to a few persons who get shot more, when you remember saying, you bring Michael Fulo, then they make shot more. But the sad thing is, and I don't agree with Dwalo on the way, he said, I'm going to blame the people. You are living what the country is day to day. You are the ones who cannot even feed your family. You are the ones who cannot pay your children's school fee. You are the ones who are afraid of the security situation. Therefore, by 5 o'clock, your running wounds will be safe. You live in it. And if the government will be telling you to take my and say, that country men saw, taking you back to the Congo for the little thing and you do it, and you say, when I bring it, we bring the people, they should know better. When the call political rally, how many people you see the whole country you can see there? So there are a lot of people who got stake, who got interest in that country. But they're waiting for what they have to show that they have stake. Nobody will use them. They will go in a small room and vote for what they think is right and what is wrong. Liberia should learn to stand up for themselves. Exactly. You're dying. You're suffering. And if you still think to be using you, and you say, when I bring them, that's the same way they will go and cast their vote. And if care not taken, they take the same oppressor and reaffirm them over them. And we tell them, when I bring them. But here's the bad thing about it, though. When they do it, you and I, all of us, suffer the consequence. The, that's why you call the tyranny of the majority. Judge, you're welcome, Mr. Lowell, the drive. <laughs> My man, you yeah. seem to be trying to incorporate the drive on the, on the class. Yeah, but we're going, going to one, we're going to one, 2023, we got to incorporate all our show into one, so we can all fire from one, one cylinder. Nah. <laughs> the, 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 drive, the drive has... The drive has nuclear weapon and we need nuclear weapon on the show. So we will not do that. Oh no, I swear. You know that that new many walk up on a on a comment still one came in. Look, we've had these conversations over and over. And and I, I was just I, I was watching the show, Steven trying to get us so early. Fighting my way, I saw that link. So I said, Mommy, I gotta make it for Monday or well, Friday, I'll do my best. I'm working. I already put some time in to be here early. Uh, Monday, I can assure you, I will always be on time moving forward. Having said that, uh, PR, there's nothing here to argue. Steven, we lined the bar pass. You recall that moment when the late Charles Judy Bryan arrived in Monrovia that afternoon, Steven? Those of us are in time after, after Lord, yeah, the suffering. You know, that sense of reawakening that. That afternoon brought to, to Monrovia. Chairman Brian arrived in that SUV long Jeep and went to a area of Mama Point. Then will come the election of Madame Salif. You know, for those of who live for our house there, see, I can see what happened in front of the Capitol building. Exactly. Behind, behind the Capitol building. We'll see a government working. We'll see people going to work. We'll see people showing up every day. But I'll tell you one thing, Stephen. I've made this argument all the time, and let Dualu, I think, in so many other people. Dualu have always said that we have educated people in Liberia, but we don't have professionals in Liberia. Many people in Liberia can read and write. Many people have skills to do a lot of different things. But professionals are not there. People who know that in the morning they should show up to work when they start work at 8 o'clock, they should be there by 7 45 because there are emails they should read, they should prepare for their day work. We don't have them. Liberia is one country where people take lunch, they don't come back. They go to the this stuff tell you that now, Palestinian, I was in Liberia the other time. You go to government ministry, and we don't need ledger who running. Nothing is happening, bro. The country is literally dead. The very first thing stealing, let Tosso and Tosso forget about me being UP man. At what point in time, maybe more Ali, you help me because me, I'm not in like, bro, the 12 year old in power. At what point in time, the people in the UP, PR, early complete, they all road project that government official, assessing minister, deputy minister, show up to UP headquarters to host press conference, dancing all day. Imagine. Never, I've never seen, I've never Imagine seen. This is the only government where you see assistant minister. I mean, we said the man is in the party of all the time raising battle cry. Doing working hour. Yeah. 
they, but let go work out. President, we are himself the man shows up. Stevie, but and, uh, and I want carry break down for because that man's supposed to be super fast. Me pull a carry. Yeah, you get my argument. So again, Stevie, President, we are come from out of the country. Spent five days abroad. Think about it for Christ in heaven. Sake. After this, no, After no, that's day. End, uh, right now, um, I get to the end. Let's start from the man previous day. The man went to yeah, the man. We all had to tell the message, my man, I got what to do before the man came home. Mm -hmm. The man didn't want to come home. The man went to Senegal for the people stayed there, but he won't leave from there. The man went there for five days. He went in Ghana, the same thing. Exactly my point, see me. And this dude comes back on Monday. Monday that I know in any professional environment, Monday is one of the most basic days because there are communications, there are files that have been brought before your desk. See me, that is the day you receive most of the emails that came in over the weekend. Yeah. Right? President, we are the only president that shows up on a Monday after being up five days. He got his hair rolled. He, he showed up Monday drunk? No, no, the forget drunk. what I'm talking about. The man showed up. He got his projects. Because he didn't go. go to the office. So, Stevie, it is a discipline. Your ability every day to wake up and understand you have to go to work. Many people don't have it in Liberia. Like when you look at CDC, you can't blame me, your 4 g too. This dude never had a job before. This man never worked before. So he does not understand what it means to be a professional. That is why the mayor for him, time to wear a bow to go to wedding, he didn't an official dress code. He shows up every day, he didn't a bow, a formal dress code. So my brother, our people, like you all say here, this election coming, see me, me I tell Liberian people, I don't care how you vote, but I will bet for Liberian people because they've shown over and over. I forgot to tell you guys when I was on here on, on, on Monday, see me. The district number four lawmaker from Lofa County. She was a guest speaker at a program I attended in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayamu Fofana. Yeah. The internal affairs minister's wife. Yeah. Stephen, I will tell you today, I have nothing against that lady. But PR, I have respect for people who go to school. I respect education. That woman, if I had recorded her delivery in that place, her articulation, with the amount of master she stated that she has, Stephen, you won't sue the school that gave her master degree. The team was sorry for. Everybody in the hall were embarrassed with her presentation. You don't got to, you don't got to, you don't got to sue the school. Just call Martin Collie to go cross check. The uh, so you didn't just see me. The woman was proud. You know what she said? She admitted one thing, Stephen. She told the people when someone said the former lawmaker, she said, "No, you are right." She said because in Liberia, the retention rate. It's very, very low in Africa. So I laughed. I said, but why should we bring you people back? What do you people do when you guys go to Capitol Building that you deserve re-election? Exactly. That is my argument. What? Why should the people of Kemo vote for Vanny Shema? Just for example, why should the people in Sando look at Amanda Milton Teddy, who was elected on a UP ticket because of his inability to even uphold his party values? Now he's proud to say he's going to be the campaign manager for President Weah. Then you expect people in Sino that trusted the institution he came for to vote for him again. This is why Liberians don't bring their lawmakers back because you people do not deliver. And I'm promising them, I bet my life for Liberian people. Most of the people will not go back to campaign. Oh, yeah. Campaign what if, what if you guys must go. go and you it is our problem. You will be campaign manager up. where? Nationally or in Sino? In Sino. Oh, okay. Stand on and keep man. Don't you ever want to be a cop? No, even if that Masale guy from bombing on UP, who we were, who were UP guy, <laughs> you should not come back. And I think me and I made my point, Stevie. Let me let's start the noise here on UP. The United Party should open up for open primaries. We need to do that. Let the party have primaries. I think so, Stevie. When the people elect you in a primary system, those people will vote for you in an election. If you handpick people, the people will not feel obligated to vote for you. I think so too. Mo Ali, what you say? You're you're planning for primary or you're going handpick? Ali, that will be primary in UP. I said that Ali on the ground. Yeah. So the 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 firstly the the party has to constitute, which I'm sure they are doing, the elections and campaigns committee. Okay. My understanding is that they have had some agreement on the composition of that committee. It is the committee that will draw up the guidelines for primaries. But definitely, 
My understanding for the vice chair for inter-party affairs, Cornelia, and other vice chair is that there will be primaries and I'm not sure anyone is going to get a free ride. Yeah. Except if you are the only uh, candidate in that, in that particular area. From your constituency. Okay. But I can assure you there are certain people who definitely will not contest on the UP ticket. I'm not an authority there, but I know, for example, Vani Shemo, if I have stated clearly that he is no longer a member of the Unity Party. Milton Tiaji still professes to be a member, but he will support Josh Weir. And it, 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 his situation is the same thing like um, Wisno. Why he's been kept in the party, nobody understands. He should be kicked out long, long ago. How about Morris Satuma? No. So, you know, Morris Satuma, <laughs> they, in fact, most of the senators took a stand not to associate with the party when we suspended them by them. I was in the leadership of the party. We suspended them for voting in the affirmative for the uh, removal of Associate Justice Janet. Yes. So when we reinstated them, Morris Setuma, Vani Shemo said they never wanted to be bothered with the party again. Okay, so good. as I know it, Morris Setuma has never since that time participated good. in any UP activity. He had never made any contribution. But of late, I was speaking with the uh, youth chair from Bomi. He has started coming around. So when oh, the no. you are telling me, I told you, I say, just by entertaining conversation from Maurice Setuma about him thinking that he's a member of the UP means that you're not supposed to be a youth chair anymore. Yeah, well, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure the party is thinking about him in any form, shape, or manner. Yeah. So there's no way. Um, even the, the lawmakers are, at the are, House yeah, of Free nine years job. Free nine free years nine from Mercy Tuma. No Mercy benefit Tuma. to the country, no benefit to the party, no benefit to anyone Zero. by itself. To anywhere, no benefit, even not, not even a benefit a to his constituency. The county <laughs> he, he, he represents in the Senate. You know, so they are oh, not... Come for Mr. Yeri and where's the means? He's concerned about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Confirmation, you know, know, what's that means? And you know, Stephen, this is the painful part about it. These people, when they do wrong, oh yeah, in the legislature, it's on us. The unity party takes the blame. Yes, they are UP lawmakers. Yes, even the lady you are talking about. Let me tell you the story about her, Maramu Fofana. Maramu Fofana was elected on the ticket of the unity party two times. See there. In 2020, why a certain representative, she said she wanted to contest for the uh, the senatorial seat. Report. Yeah. Yeah. And then we told her, yeah, no problem. There were three. She, Ko Bangalu, and Brownie Samuka. We told her, yeah, y'all go through the process. We'll do the vetting. And she insisted, no, I am a certain lawmaker. So I told her, I said, but because you are a certain lawmaker, you should give other people the chance. Positions were not just created for you. The moment we left that particular meeting, that executive committee meeting, she said there was conspiracy against her because she's a Madingo. We don't want her to be. So she resigned from the party. But she failed to realize that she was Madingo and on two occasions, you are female we put her on the party ticket against another Madingo person who also had the, 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 the popularity to win. This guy, in fact, became so disenchanted because Madam Sally are promising that look, let her go this time. Next time, we'll find a space for you to contest. In 2017, the guy said, But this is my time, and we told him, Look, back off. She's a sitting lawmaker. Let her continue. The next day, she was all on the radio. Eh, you need the party in Lem and Hingo people. This and that. No Two sense. Times. No sense. Two <laughs> times you contested, you won. No Stevie, sense. Can, can, can I say one thing? Yeah. Yeah. 
No, uh, we are almost done. But just one second, I'm begging no, no, so go much. Ahead. I just want to know what Ali was there, talking there about. There is a tendency. There is a tendency for people in government, especially the elected oh. officials in the legislature, especially the representatives and senators, to it's believe long. that the six or nine years that they've given them, if they don't do the people's bidding, the consequences that will befall the country will only be experienced by people who are not there. We got a long history of people who served government and did not do their job. Everything that happens to the country is also just going to affect them in the negative way it's going to affect this population. Yes, it's true because some of them are stealing money. And, and you know, I don't understand people. That's why I tell the young Liberian elected positions are legacy positions. You cannot just take anybody from the gutter and put them in that position. I don't know when they will take, you know, Pia is right. I don't want to believe this, but Pia is right. It, it pains me because I don't want to put so much burden on our people because they, they are so poor. The psychology is made them to be doing things differently. But then again, where are we going to put a responsibility? How can you be suffering and you allowing people to use you negatively? That's going to impact your children in a way. Look, me tell people all the time, I published your paper called Zogo is Us. We are creating a Zogodom in Liberia. This issue is not a, it's not a joking matter. Our society is not just denigrating for the worst. It's going to come to a level where there will not be no peace in that country. Now, I'm not talking about war. I'm talking about instability that is caused by serious hardship and poor education in the country. We are taking vain, glorious men and women, and we're giving them serious positions to govern the country. And you're not allowed to talk it. When you talk it, they say, oh, you're jealous. Of course I'm jealous. I'm jealous that we are the least in everything. I'm jealous we don't have hospitals. We don't have decent schools. We don't have jobs. We don't have no prospect of a better future for most of the young people in the country. Do you realize that most of the young men in the country that are driving pimping, their backs are giving up even as early as 30 years old? How they, do don't know that they, they don't know they're hurting themselves. That pimping with that type of roast TV, your spine... And, and, like, and, 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 and this is your productive It's going to be a serious problem. That thing is a problem. That bouncing on that bike. Yeah, that's that's not a second point. Point. You you the end of the thing. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be on that bike. You know, no, my Johnny, well, this is the point. I have to say this. No, no, no. I'm going to be on that bike. Let me say this. I want to say this. I'm not fighting the young people for driving motorcycles. They got to the act out of the living. That's not my point. Yeah, yeah, my I point is they have to force the government to create jobs. That's what I'm I'm getting at. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor Moore. Yeah, you know, um Bro, they, 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 you, you need a black day guy here, man. They, they, they really walk on guy. Here. <laughs> you know, you know, indeed. <laughs> The people are to be blamed for the kind of governance that we have I agree. in the country. But I think because of what the people have seen over the years with this government, the people are resolved, they are silent. The people passed through a lot in Liberia during the war to recoup succession of war and with what they are facing now, even during the heat of the war, I believe they didn't face this. It is a war. It is a mental slavery war. It is a financial war because family being torn apart. Marriages being torn apart. Children are in the street turning to Zogos and Zogis and what have you. People are losing their I lose Zogodong. Zogodong. People can barely send a kid. Yo, for me, yo, black. <laughs> so good, People can barely send their kids to school. They See work. The they pay. Can I help them? And you know what? Where, where they are, they don't want somebody to come in there and say, "Let's go and protest." They're waiting for that day, but they will avenge the anchor at the ballot box. Yeah. I'm of the conviction, and. If you travel from here and you go to the library and you ride it in a bus, they put a look at you, you're looking decent as in, so who are you going to vote for? They're not going to tell you, say, they're not voting for we are. I spoke with a couple of people from Liberia and they, and, and, and they told me on the phone, they said, you know what? The people who voted for him now, they come into us telling us, say, don't vote for him. We said, no, when we told y'all, y'all didn't listen. Now I want time to vote for him. So, 
Yeah, you, you, you know, so these people minds are made up. And what we are doing here, we are doing a, a great job, especially those in the heat of land. Especially those in, in the rural land. They are able to follow the show on many media outlets. But like you all were saying, those senators, those representatives from the United Party that betray the party and betray the people and want to come back, they don't have a second chance. We cannot give them a second chance. They cannot be trusted. They cannot be. So I say to us, let us continue to educate them. Let us continue to speak about the ills of the government, how the government treated. Look at the big lie, sorry to use this word, that the president told the people that they came back with 250 million. Where is it? Who gave it to them? Monopoly money. <laughs> you know, in, 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 look, I mean, I'm gonna run away. I'm going to daddy duty. How you go to jail? Go to jail, you know? Yeah, somebody yeah. inbox me. I said, I can't get a city. We, so yeah. Friday, go. we on. Yeah, yeah, but let me, say right, my man. Go to the let me say this. That was, you know, when, 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 when Pastor talk about money, there was this guy who was studying accounting. And you know, these accountant, um, they play with figures. So he was standing over that in his house and, and were calling big figures. A debit sister, eight million, a credit in eight million, you know, and they roll, <laughs> and they roll over her him, debiting and crediting millions. So the road thought that the guy was actually playing with cash. So the road climbed through the city and entered the guy's room and met the guy laying down on the, on the, on the ground with the book open with the, with the candle. But then the road had a collar in your head, right? So when the road met the guy laying down, you know the road did, you know when you lay the collar on the side, yeah, not to chop him, but just to spank him. Yeah, the road spanked him on his back and said, "Next time you study my lawyer voice." Yeah, so yeah, Joe, we are coming with 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 two hundred fifty million. What the money? You know that's you. You don't even have to give the money. Show us the publications. Show us the documentation. Let review the documents to prove that these monies are forthcoming. What are the conditions on this money? The president lied. And Pastor Pastor, I know you are pastor. It's a complete lie. We got the quotes by the real names. And do I do and others? You don't blame. We are. I saw one when we are came by. You saw one big news bro here. Like I was saying, he said, "What we are? We are what? Scores. We are scores. Look at that kind of nonsense. So what our paper was really trying to say. Then you saw you blame. We are. This man said that in Qatar and say poor promising hundred million. He pay around, pay around, come by. Then then you are newspaper, credible newspaper. Gave big news bro here and say we are scores. Scores what? Go what? Who go? But, but gentlemen, I would say this, uh, Stephen, say you're going to the line. We have to understand there is a concerted effort by the government. And to my fellow Liberians, wherever you are, anytime you hear someone telling you now that, oh, the way the opposition divided, know that that person is doing the government PR work. There are poor government platforms that are dedicated towards propagating falsehood. That is why you continue to hear them saying, oh, the way the opposition did not together like that, I think the people will just stay with Joshua. That is the government talking point that they are propagating. And again, we've been very clear. Some of these fake platforms are dangerous to society. If, if fake visual as a winker is a harm to our country, we need to call out these fake media outlets and educate our people. And for me, I'm not uh, one thing I, you know, I do not hold back. And that's why I make clear today when Costa wrote a post, I said, communicate that to your friends at Spoon. Talking about, oh, Senator Lawrence and, and Cummings, I think they're forming a ticket. I think they said that they don't organize a meeting. Thank God he not show up because he, after that, he will talk about that area of meeting. So we need, you people need to be educated. Don't let the government. And the CDC media outlet fool you folks. That is their strategy. And we'll speak against it every time they try to. While it's true, we want to be professional, but we'll now hesitate to call these folks out. 
And we need to be on it. We must respond to them. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Um, and let me welcome Senator Dillon um, to the show. I mean, you, 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 you come into class unannounced. It, it, like, you can't catch, you know, like how those days in the school, the, the principal, you know, let me tell you this story, man. It's crazy. We had this guy had a video club in our era. Um, but he will go stay across the room and, and, and monitor Steven, the room. You always get a story about someone. And, 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 monitor, and monitor the room and be counting from across the room who are entering, right? He will count, then he will come to the video club door and meet the guy to the door and say, damn it. The 15 person will get inside today. We will show the same show tomorrow because I know that 300 I will make today. So the, all the guys in the video club say they may have better seat. Because every time he will kind of call the exact figure and how much person in the video club were all looking. Now he will be hiding from across the street. So one day they spotted him. <laughs> <laughs> the spot that he hiding under the table <laughs> across the road where people <laughs> where he will be counting who are entering. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't walk on like, 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 like the guy. The guy somewhere I met him the other day we were laughing about this. He, he, I was feeling around the other table. I mean, it's good to, to have you here. And there are lots of things trending about Liberty Party and uh, Senator Yombly and um, we've been hearing gossips. It's good that you're here. We also want to know the status of the Liberty Party case, so it's good that you've joined us. So, Senator, we'll let you talk on the, 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 the news with, uh, with uh, the quote-unquote alleged meeting and then the, the status of the Liberty Party. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm using my new home office. Uh, I hope uh, no echo, no nothing. It's good. It's Audio. Good. good, good. Okay. Thank you. Um, the legislature is on break, the annual break for the year. We will return the second Monday in January in keeping with law. It's good to be here. Um, George Lobo, thank you for being available around. Uh, I understand Dualu was here earlier. Very more, thank you. Uh, to, the, to the crew, thank you. Uh, let me say good evening to Liberia's home and good day wherever you are around the world. I don't want to jump into a topic. I want to give a few minutes so that I know what's going on. But um, the issue about um, Senator Lawrence, the political leader of Liberty Party, allegedly having a meeting with Mr. Cummings, is something um, I had initially talked to be very drastic about in rubbishing the story. Um, but then, uh, on advice, I thought to slow down because we'll be giving the people exactly what they want. It's a catch 22. If you don't say something to it, the tendency for people to believe it. If you say something to it, then you elevate it to the level that they want it to be. Um, look, people calling for opposition unity, let me be very frank on this microphone. I said I will speak on the 31st of December. I will have a, a two hour interaction with media people from my house here. It will be live on T radio stations. I want to pull some things out as we enter into 2023. But let me state this for now. Senator Lawrence, the political leader of our party, Liberty Party, has had no direct or indirect interaction, conversation with Mr. Cummings since the day he disrespected her and went to Liberty Party headquarters. They have not crossed paths, directly or indirectly. I can understand that the, the game plan was to use uh, some network, media network, to help to disintegrate the original CPP. Some member party saw it a good thing to aid and abet that process, believing that breaking down and uh, believing the imagination to diminish other parties will elevate the American Ellis Commons. For one and a half years, 
ANC particularly. You see, when, a, when CDC fighting us, we can understand CDC has a right to fight us. But when constituent members party of the original ALCPP set on the platform for one and a half years to do everything to alienate, obliterate, and decimate, uh, 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 destroy, so to speak, a constituent party. Calm down with a big book. Now go English. I'm, so trying to, to, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to pass my telegraph more than that. So chakra. <laughs> you know, when 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 a constituent member of the original CPP thought it was a good thing in their favor to use a media platform to denigrate, disrespect, drag down a constituent member or other constituent members of the original CPP, believing that it will play to their advantage and elevate the status of their men, um, it was just unfortunate. Ellis Cummings and I, Senator Dillon, and Vice Chairman for Political Affairs and Liberty Party, we have not seen one another except on the newspaper since September last year. Ellis Cummings has not seen Senator Lawrence since September 2021. I'm not saying this going September 2021. They have not interacted, not even via text message. So the news that Senator Lawrence is approaching Ellis Cummings to be a running mate. Is there another flaw? Because after successfully helping to destroy the original CPP, then that platform turned on Ellis Cummings, believing that they have designated Ellis Cummings. The new deal now is let's not go and sow seed of this call in the Waka camp with the Waka partnership. So when you hear you are a, you you are a diehard UP person, you're hoping that Boaka could name his running mate in a partnership with Liberty Party. Then you hear that Mumbi met with Komizo and she asking Komis to be a running mate. And some people can take this kind of news on face value. Mm -hmm. That is the intent. Now, when you say this thing is a trash. I'm not going to respond to it, and not you, then you're giving an opportunity for that misinformation to, to grow, to okay. spread, and to, yeah. So we understand the game. We understand the plot. Nyobli Kanga Lawrence has repeatedly stated, look, Liberty Party will take a conscious decision in the interest of this country that in as much as we had the we have the qualification by law, we have not groomed ourselves to the stature of Charles Bronskin. So the 2023 elections, especially so, with our purposeful intent and and decision to be a part of the collaboration of the four parties, we will not create any form of division or anything that would disintegrate that collaboration, we will not field a presidential ballot. Presidential ballot meaning president and vice president as well. That was our decision to help the unity, growth, and strength of the original CPP. Uh, Mr. Cummings and his ANC decided that it is their right they must do it. They must break everything down to make comments. And in the process, they ready they break a lot of things. And we're out fixing those things. And some of us say that we're endless comments. I hear people say opposition must be united, one opposition unity, and all of these things. And tell, yes. us, and tell us, Senator, how the CPP started? How we, it was not even the political leader who started CPP. No, we started CPP. No political leader had any dream about CPP. No. 
It was Steven Johnson, it was Mo Ali, it was Bwaka Jaleba, it was Telia Ure, uh, uh, um, few of us. Um, and we invited George Wisner. He was not part of the original think tank. No. Uh, I think Tao Wongwe. And we, we gave breath to the CPP. In fact, the first statement that came out of the intent of CPP to hold together was done by Mo Ali and Darius Taylor. Yep. When, when, when Vice President Joel Howard Taylor went to Banga and said that our time, you don't CDC or yep. you don't walk. And we thought it was a violation of the Constitution Article 18. And Mo Ali called me and said, I mean, why you think we can't issue one statement? I said, put that statement together. I will get the Liberty Party to join us. In fact, let's start to get the political parties involved rather than us individually speaking out. We came from a chat room, we call it opposition working room. You remember? Yeah. And Muna Fahad and, and Ko Yadoro, I think yeah. Ko, Ko, yeah. Ko Fabulous. CP, very well. And then, CPP came about, but to get back on track, the political leader of my party, and I speak to this with authority, the political leader of my party has not met with Mr. Cummings, has not interacted with Mr. Cummings. Since September, or earlier than that, in 2021, she sent Mr. Cummings three messages in September 2021, as her counterpart, advising him and admonishing him not to show disrespect to her, not to honor my her authority, and not to do business with her, the party chairman of our party, directly in the name of the party, because he wouldn't like Daniel Nathan doing that to him. Exactly. Ellis, Com Ellis Cummings opened those communications. When people read your WhatsApp message, you can know there's indication. He didn't reply. He has never replied, Senator Lawrence. Uh, the week leading to we entire campaign rally, Mr. Lewis Bryan came to my office. He was in my office for more than one hour, 30 minutes, asking my, my, my voice my participation and seeking uh, for us to talk. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in talking. What is wrong is when it is a lie that somebody is talking when they are not talking. And I told Mr. Brown, anything I would do in the name of Liberty Party, I would do it through the direct authority and instruction of the party leadership led by Yomri Kanga Lawrence. He asked if Mr. Cummings, we can initiate some discussion. I told him we have, we have a no a word to anybody. I'm angry at Ellis Cummings. My anger is not so bitter that it, is, it, will, it will be blunt to the interests of the country, especially as a national leader myself. Mr. Cummings sent me a message a few days ago asking for us to meet. And I told my political leader that I'm going to tell him that any meeting he's seeking to have with me will be through the hierarchy of my party under the direct authority and instruction of the political leader of the Liberty Party. Nobody will wrap, will never allow anybody to wrap a, a, any ring around yeah. the authority of our political leader. Exactly. Because that's how this uh, honor, money, and disrespect of your leader can start. So it is not true uh, that Nyobi Kanga Lawrence met uh, Cummings. It is not true that they have spoken in recent time. Should they speak? No big deal. Should political leaders in the country meet in the better interest and good interest of the oh, country? Yes. Sure. But when you want to make a, a propaganda with the purpose for intent to sow seed of this call, as you have successfully done with other institutions, we will not allow it to thrive for one minute. So it is not true. It is a lie. And I can speak to this 
with other authority that I have as vice chair for political affairs under the leadership of Nyambi Kanga Lawrence as political leader. So I have one question for you. What what what, what are our firms? Mo Ali stuck in Pins Bay, you won't come for the phone. My man, you're very more ready. You need to you need to call the name and get the phone. Okay, because... so uh no, uh Mo will get the phone tomorrow. I'm going because to visit yeah, one, Mo. one the lines to be one gave one line exclusively to women. Yeah, we have the numbers. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, you, going visit, you, I'm, you I'm going to visit Mo tomorrow to put in the situation or take the phone. I'm going to get a number for America too because I tell my number being public, public, <laughs> public, public record. You, Stevie Ray, in America, you refuse to make your number public, you make my oh, number, yes. So, get number. I you to go live. So, yeah, let me. So, so get a so, uh, number too, Stevie. Yeah. I so, before that. If, I, if I'm using my phone, I use my phone to go live. I'm saying your phone. I say get American number for the show. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I can buy these, uh, uh, how you call them? I can buy these prepaid phones. Then. Okay, yeah, that's what I mean. You know, uh, before I close, let me say this. Ellis Cummings did everything he thought he had in him to honor my disrespect and put aside everything that Nyombi Kanga Lawrence worked for as a political person, political leader in this country. Ellis Cummings thought he could do every anything to even honor my, my person, in my office. At that time, it was all, all Hail Mary for ANC. You remember, Ellis Cummings disrespected me by not even talking to me when he was quoting and, and contracting the chairman of the Friends of Delo, Imaya Yato, believing that Yato made Delo Senator, so Yato is all powerful. One, I get Yato for honor Dillon. Everybody who supported Dillon, honor we'll the friends him. of Dillon, if you will follow him. And let's come in there a lot. Uh, but say, office and, staff in Monrovia. Of course, I know that. I know that. And so, but you see, my, my being angry at Mr. Cummings, it is not better to the extent where we put the, the greater interest of the country. Aside, this young, this gentleman must understand that unity is not to break other people down to build yourself when all of you are under the same umbrella or supposed to be under the same umbrella. I, I'm, I've always said I'm very grateful to Imai Yato and all of you. Say, so, uh, Dylan, let me ask you a no, question. One minute, one minute, please. One minute, please. One minute, please. I'm very grateful to Imai Yato. And I have told him this on and off the telephone, on and off the public space, personally, in private places, to people way beyond him. I'm grateful. But you see, it is Darius Dillon that the people whom many bro wanted to be senator. Anybody who I had named to be chairman of the Friends of Dillon institution, it is that person the people who have dealt with. Because it is Dillon the people wanted. Anybody, I named Martin Kula as coordinator of my campaign and the people there with Martin. I named the various structures and the people there with those structures. Those structures did not name themselves. A lot of people volunteered, so true. We are grateful. But when Mr. When Mr. Cummings were made to believe or thought that these structures they don't put into place, I will honor my him by taking them for honor him with no courtesy to him, no conversation with him, and all that stuff. The Bauer says, Vengeance is mine. I will repay. The, the ANC people want to break the spoon talk down. It started only took five days on comments, and they want to break spoon talk down. 
But their facilitated, enabled spawn and spawn talk for probably 20 months. Then a great Joseph Waga. Yeah, this is the Yeah, yeah, and, and I say, yeah, I say all ability. sorts of talks, stuff about, about, about Benina Ure and those of us who decided that we will look toward Joseph Waga. And it's only five days of their soup that they cook and they want to burn spoon talk down. It's up to them. Let me repeat. It will have to meet Mr. Cummings. It will be a public announcement. Nobody will bust the secret. Nobody will leak the secret. In the interest of the country, it will have to sit with Alex Cummings. Cummings? There will be prior notice to our partisan in the country. Because the good are spewing and skewing things. Believing that when they do so, it makes Mr. Cummings president already. That nonsense will not work. Okay, go ahead. Pia, I wanted to ask you a question. Yeah, Pia, sorry. And let me give it up to you, Mo Ali, and others. Uh, just in reference to the point you made that it was not the political leaders who formed the CPP, and, and so you guys have the credit. But I was thinking, whatever Mr. Cummings did and the way he did it, didn't you, the original framework of the, of the whole concept, in a way, give him a free hand by not acting when he started to misbehave. Because Mr. Cummings started misbehaving, number one. When he started running behind Larry Yankwe, then you're already in a coalition. Right? Parties are working together. So it's like, oh, you're in a coalition. Then you know the party can't recruit. You they don't say you can't join you know the party. Everybody thought that it was a normal thing. When it was, it was, it was Larry Yankwe and running around the UP people, sitting lawmaker and think coming recruiting any job, they went join ANC. And nobody said anything about it. Was he, was he in that kind of situation that enabled him to believe that he could take it as far as political leaders? So, so what we did, what we did when Mr. Cummings started that, at that time, CPP was not a legal entity as in the framework document. And we, we found on it, we had several meetings about it, and so it informed a count in the framework document to stop it, to discourage it. Because if we honor one umbrella and we turn and you take him and are taking from you to bring to me, we still turn. Go as I have recruit. Even though individual partisans from any party can decide to want to join another party. But if all of your own one umbrella as a collaboration, were you taking people from your member party, uh, constituent party, on the collaboration to bring to your fold? You're causing hard feelings, you're bringing misgivings, and you're bringing division. So it was part of that action of Mr. Cummings before, frame, uh, before CPP framework document was legalized. That action informed part of the framework account to discourage and 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 to and to prevent that from happening. Yeah, okay, that's all right because he did it to 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 Yahweh, he did it to there's a guy from Basel, I think from that Bijo Town district. How they call him? Ali would know the people. Ali was he in L, I think you are in LP LP man. Hello, so no, so, so you uh, 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 Thomas Goswa. Yeah, Thomas Goswa. Thomas Goswa was the first, uh, they, they ran after, but by that time, the senator Dillon said we were still in the formative stages. In fact, when they took Thomas Goswa, it was when we are initiated rotational meetings at the full political party headquarters, and so this day it was the term of the ANC to host. And we went there and, and, and what's his name? Horatia Gu announced Thomas Goshua as their new member. 
And so I got piss off and call him on the side. I said, well, we are coming to your party headquarters for meeting. And you are aware that Thomas Goshua was just elected on the United Party's ticket in, I think, District 3 or something in Grand Basel. Why are you announcing him? He said, oh, my man, we didn't know. He, he never told us that. I told him, I said, my man, stop that. And it was from there that we, we, we started saying, if we will collaborate, you can do this. Correct. And then they went after, um, what's his name? Larry Yonkoy. But we, we, we put measures in the framework document, like Senator Dillon stated, and moving forward, it really did not happen. But you're right, Pia, we should have seen all those signs. But again, our intention was... From the very beginning, we were few who, who thought that Mr. Weah would not do anything better for the country. And because our people were so down, we needed to give them hope. And we didn't think that doing it individually would have given the hope that, that, that was needed. And so this idea about the opposition coming together was birthed. You know, after the elections, there were just few of us who used to talk on the radio who were brave enough. That was me, Senator Dillon, Bakai Jaleba, and a few other persons. By that time, when, when, when the people hear the siren of we are, they were still on the road and just be clapping. So you have to be brave enough to even go on the radio and critique the government. Can I can, can uh, I can uh, uh, Steven? Yeah. Can you can you ask the senator now about the Liberty Party stop because it's over three hours gotta go to the line? Yeah, yeah. So at least he has spoken on Yomri issues so that yeah, but the Liberty Party stop, then we'll go to the yeah, line. Yeah, we'll go to the line, yeah. And, so then, have had... and, then, and then maybe maybe when you finish with the Liberty Party thing, whether he has an opinion or comment on what we discussed today, which is the interview of uh Ledger who Rennie about what happening at his ministry. That was our main key talking point today. I just want to say something then when the senator get done, please. Yeah, say, say it, then 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 he can just answer all together. All right, thank you. Uh, first, uh, I want to commend the senator for coming out and speaking not only to us as panelists, but to the people that he's owed to and to those many people that are listening via radio and watching on Facebook. Because people are easily quicker to believe the deception than the truth. And coming out here and debunking what is being fed by the Spoon Network, I want to commend you for that. Because this is, this is a breaking news. And also, I want to say thank you for telling your many, many voters out there that if ever there will be a meeting, it's not going to be held in secret because people want to use other people to build themselves up. Thank you very much, Honorable Senator. Thank you, sir. So, Reverend, I will, I will call you Reverend, but you can just say Darrell Taylor, leader, Honorable Dr. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, regarding uh, the Minister of Information. Well, you have a Liberty Party file. Man. No, let me just go through the Minister okay. of Information. Liberty Party, uh, we have had final argument before the Justice in Chamber. We are waiting his ruling. Um, we we'll look forward to, I'm not too sure what is tomorrow or Friday. So we'll look forward to next week. Uh, regarding, but we are very, very hopeful with everything on hand. Um, the the facts available, the legal, the law on our side. I told you, meaning this platform, that when everything was looking darky, dim, the political leader always guided us to stay on the side of the law and do everything right and keep writing and keep putting elections commission on notice formally and file our 
documents. So that one day, when somebody said, what really happening at Liberty Party? Let me see you bring your photo. We can be on the right side. And that's what happening to them. He said, justice is blind. When justice is blind, even if it delay, it does not deny you. And that's what happening. We'll win this case with ease, even though it's taking some time, especially at the stage where we are. The Elections Commission has said over and again that it is not in error to hear this matter because it has jurisdiction. When you take a lower court or an administrative hearing on sanctuary, the writ of sanctuary, meaning you are asking the judge in a higher court to review a judgment made by a judge in the lower court or from an administrative hearing like the Elections Commission, complaining to the higher court that there was error, legal error made by the judge in the lower court and that the judge in the higher court should reverse that error to restore your rights. Elections Commission says the Constitution and the election law grant us the authority to regulate political parties, to hold hearing, quasi-judicial hearings and render judgment. We have not done so in the Liberty Party case. Everything we have done here at the Elections Commission was to administratively reply Musa Belete when he write a letter, we reply him. When Musa, when Yomli write, we reply her. We have not gone in a full-scale hearing. Now a full-scale hearing has been ordered, conducted, and the hearing officer is about to hear the case. Musa said, no, don't hear the case. The hearing officer ruled against him. He went to the board. The full board sat and said, no, the hearing officer has authority to hear this case because we, the board, have that ruled on any hearing, full scale hearing from the hearing officer in this case, in favor of 10 of the parties there. Every communication, every statement that have come out of the election commission were all administrative. Now you take election commission to the Supreme Court to say they are in error. Election commission is saying no. Factually, we are not in error. We have not had a hearing to render a judgment. It is a hearing now in Liberty Party complaint that the constitution was altered and that there is a false representation of Liberty Party and our logo in something they call CPP with Mr. Cummings. That is why I call it the Cummings PP. Because Liberty Party is falsely being represented and our emblem is being desecrated behind Ellis Cummings. And we take it from there using the arm of the law. Regarding Ledger, the Minister of Information, you know, resignation is a, is a personal thing. Ledger was in pain. He's been left out. You know, I was my friend, I was my, my colleague, uh, Senator Snow, when he said he carried his investor to Ellen Place and he left him in the power house. Yeah, that Palawan Hawk building that won't hurt Edwin Snow that time. The, it's not the, the operational fund that is not coming through the budget. <laughs> yeah, it's that what is pain in Ledger who is that people who he's close to, very good friends, are very close to George Weir, and probably they don't even. Asking President Weir why what man Ledger did to you. Yeah. Yeah. So once Ledger who can go to Jamaica Resort at any time and get that glass at any time, that operational budget, he, he wouldn't talk about it. And from what I heard Ledger who said today, from his professional standpoint, he lost courage. It was today he should have resigned. But resignation is a personal thing. You can't do, um, you can't be too, I don't want to say sycophantic. You're loyal to somebody who ain't care for your professionalism. Yeah, ain't care for You're loyal to somebody who doesn't care about, about making you, making your job easier or better. 
You loyal to somebody who making you to appear incompetent? Where is courage? When I accused Ellis Tyler of being the lead gang that distributed 5,000 US dollars each to lawmakers to orchestrate the removal of Edwin Snow as speaker when I was chief of staff, when Ellis Tyler finally won as a senator, he wanted to keep me in his office. Even from my third grade level, where the way job business can be hard when you don't have any career. I told Ellis Tyler, I can't work with you. Yeah. I'm working out of this office because you do not have the moral conduct, the ethical standing for me to serve you as chief of staff. I resigned. And I, when I resigned, Joel called, uh, Senator Joel Howard Taylor called me and said, I saw you running the affairs of the office of the speaker. I want you to come run my office. I resigned. Mother Sally was paying my school fees at Australia University. Everybody knows it's an open secret. When they dismissed employees at the GSC, I think 45 employees, mm -hmm. I sent I sent Robert Salif and Mother Salif an email on my position. They ignored it. When the issue happened at the PPCC, where I think uh one person. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I thought it was conflict of interest. I spoke about it from America and said corruption has won a war in Liberia against the government. So but I said it was not happy, Raul said it was not happy, so the delay paying my school fees. So I then I sensed that these people want to use school fees payment and as a backing for me to suspend my conscience mm -hmm. and my voice God has given me to speak in the country on issues that are wrong. I wrote Madam Salif and Robert Salif a three-page email after five semesters of, of college education. I wrote them a three-page email and I got on the plane and I returned to Morovia. Courage. 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 I'm minister. Let me say this. This show is not for me. I came late. When I decided to support Ellen Johnson Salif in 2011, on the 1st of March, Joel Howard Taylor fired me after four years of serving as chief of staff. No one day suspension on ethical issue, moral issue. No one day suspension on bad behavior on the job. No one day warning to say you lack the competence or ability to do my job. No warning. When I express my support for Marasali, Joel Howard Taylor fired me. I heard it on 7 o'clock news. Hmm. I made a commitment to myself there and then that especially government job I will, I will never work at anybody's will and pleasure. When in 2017, when we believe that Liberty Party with Councilor Bruskin was about to win the election, who were forming our cabinet. And I was supposed to be in the office of the president. And I told Councilor Bruskin, no chief. I, don't, I will not work in the executive. I won't work in the government. He said, why? And I explained to him. I said, I have made a determined principle not to work at anybody's pleasure in government because it takes away your courage to do some things, speak out some things when you see it wrong. And Councillor Jogunle said to me, <laughs> Let me win a leisure I appoint you come my office, I will lock you up. And we laughed. <laughs> Let me say this. In 2017, run off. We were almost at the verge of supporting George Weir. You know, I remember with George Weir with Ben Sandy and Musa Bennett and Harrison Conway. All of you here know, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I met with Joseph Waka separately. And you met with, with me and Ali. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So, but 
Everything he me said that Ellen was giving that election to George Weah, and George Weah will win. The country wanted George Weah. The country believed that if George Weah was not president, the country would not move, and support life won't develop. It was in the system. So I said, if I support George Weah, and he wins, and I stand by my principle not to take any job from him, and he's screwing up, and I speak up, it can easily be dismissed to say, oh man, all of your police men, they ain't gay, you something, now what are you talking? Right? Principle, courage. Let you should have resigned today, but then resignation is personal. And in a country like Liberia, where if you are not a strong willed person to survive political fasting, against something that you don't want, you think it's bad. No, you're not going to give it up. Ledger didn't give it up today because Ledger would look at the environment and said, if oh, I resign, how will you... find a job? How will we eat? You know? do, you, do you suspect that some of the colleagues or some people around the president we have taken news to the president about Mr. Rennie because uh, my information is jogging like that. If somebody took message to him and said that they don't did this, the boy in engaging you already enemy to him. I mean, let you yeah. was a guy from EOBC to Mika, and all of a sudden, somebody was even telling me that when he was shaking the president hand, you could see that the president was not even probably extending a hand or like taking it away and looking different direction. Is it will be? Some gossip has said some things to the president, but let you. George Weah doesn't like competence. He doesn't like people who are way professional than him and people who want to be professional on the job. So, you know, the bootleggers around the president, that man, that all like professional. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you want, yeah. He knows plenty. Jibo Dawe. Or Jibo, or Jibo Kuhun. Yeah, Jibo Dawe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that a man say he professional, so he 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 want Ale Eugene Fagon. Eh? <laughs> he want Ale, so, so, he want Ale. Yeah, 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 yeah. So talking serious thing. Yeah, so it's all oh, for children. Okay, Carrasco, anything I do, just put it oil. Uh, Eugene want 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 to, and Eugene and Ledger were friends. Who who in the country ain't know about Eugene Ledger when that was killed? Who in the country ain't know about Eugene Namwe, Darius Dillon, and Ledger Hope? Yeah. When I was close in the circle of Marasali, you know where Eugene Namwe resigned from, from CDC? You know where? The discussion started from a living room here in Ganave, where Jay Kaba called him who them I had a team. You know where Ledger, you know where Eugene Namwe resigned? Right on Ledger laptop inside your PC office and they claim the stand put it on the air at breaking news. Hmm. Yeah. To resign because we wanted we wanted to, to get Eugene and Marcelin had already said that she was not too comfortable with Eugene because he not straight he and Joe we are not screwed and all plenty of time and you know yeah they not eating plenty of time so yeah but my proximity with Marcelin my privileged Presumably with Manasalif, I use it to get my friends closer. My friends who have some talent, I believe. Eugene, like him or not, he's politically savvy and he he he, he knows the microphone. Give it to him or not. And you know, Ledger who is a professional guy. So my proximity group, I was not afraid of recruiting talent. You know, people always think that the way I am, if I bring more Ali there, more Ali there will all shine me and take my place. I wasn't afraid of recruiting talent to Marasalif camp. So we got Ledger with them, and Eugene resigned right on Ledger with laptop, right in your busy office, and we clear upstairs and made it a breaking news hmm. from our Secretary General of CDC. And then how close we've been for more than 25 years. When John We are one election, Eugene and Ledger, they, Ledger who they won't dare talk to me or call me on telephone unless we made mistake coincidentally made in a social place. Until I won election, a senator at God will have it. So uh, uh, Ledger was a professional person. I wish him well. I could see that he's in anguish. 
Um, he's concerned about his reputation. He's concerned about the feelings and the mental state of his parents and his family. It, you know, it's a painful thing when the government in is a, not... In the man world, the, the, the Peter Bird, the striving massive of, of victory, the best said his reputation is bruised. That's what Leje who said. So you're right. So uh, 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 in a country like Liberia where the government is reluctant, and not just this government, but it's prevalent under this administration. In a country like Liberia where the, the government does not find it befitting to prosecute bad behavior, especially when it is among close people, close to proximity of power, then why it does, it casts expression on everybody in public space. And then it, 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 it is a convenient thing to say everybody in government corrupt because nobody is being prosecuted exactly. for bad behavior. So let always in pain, uh, 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 psychological pain, because his explanation to this is he's not eating, he's not putting in hand anywhere, no opportunity for him to gain space to put in hand <laughs> anywhere, so he needs falling. Yeah, man, this falling. Don't go back your money. You make crying. For Operation Money, 17,000. So Operation, the, the Ministry of Information, you know, uh, I have been saying this, and I think I would need to look at it for a more. I don't want to just make it one pronouncement because there's a microphone for me. I've always thought that in this day and age, there is no need for a Ministry of Information. Take the cultural department and don't make it, into, don't make it autonomous. Put a cultural department on the Ministry of Internal Affairs. I got this idea recently when I served as keynote speaker at the, Inter the International Anti-Corruption Day at the Labrador Council of Churches last Friday. Take the Cultural Affairs Department of the, of the Ministry of Information, Cultural Affairs, and put it on the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Take tourism and make it autonomous. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and quite that entire damn thing they call Ministry of Information. Because the Ministry of Information never says anything about the legislature, almost never says anything about the judiciary. It only says when the president changes shoes, yeah. when he wears Kobe, and when he proposes... It's supposed to be the spokesperson for the entire government. For the entire it, government. It's it, it just a matter of duplication because even currently at the Ministry of Internal Affairs, you have an assistant minister for culture. Exactly. And at, the, at the Ministry of Information, you also have an assistant minister for culture. Exactly. So duplication all over the place. I'm going to look at that, 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 that I creating the Ministry of Information, and I'm going to, I'm not going to rush with it. I'm going to make good sense of it. I'm going to dig behind the idea as to did, why. Did he already announced in the class reloaded that when he become president, he's going to dissolve the Ministry of Information. He said it on the class. Here. <laughs> And in fact, it's just perfectly fit. If I were a UP lawmaker listening that day, I would have already put that bill on the floor. But one who is leaning toward Braga as someone who supports Braga for president, I am going to pick that up. Do you know that's how you make your political institution and your leaders strong? That's how you make your political institutions strong. When your leaders and your political institutions say, don't sign 20 money. The strength of the political parties in opposition is also at the legislature. Exactly. When your political party has issued a condemn, uh, con condemnation statement against raw fund uses without authority, then you who are on the party ticket in the legislature, especially when you know what your party is saying is true, then you don't vote otherwise. Then when you, because when you do otherwise, you weaken your political party. You know, when we are elected on party tickets, what we do, they're spreading the image of our party or weakening the institutions. Don't go to the legislature, they send us to represent. What we do, they're spreading the image and the chances of our party, of our, of our institution, or hampers or hurts the chances or image of our institution. If Liberty Party issue a statement, it is bad to print money now because there is no sense in printing money. Because the conditions for which they want to print money does not make sense. And here are the reasons and the justification. The party called press conference issue statement. Then you, the party person, elected on the party ticket, then you vote otherwise. You're stabbing the institution in the back. 
You know? So I'm looking at that. I, uh, I feel for Ledger Hood. Uh, yeah. But Why? then again, but then again, Ledger who has his family, and when he feels strongly at a later time, he must take the decision. The job we are no, that don't think that he thought of it. He gets there again. He did a lot of more. Oh, yeah, he thought. I think he thought he might go out more. So, Stevie, let them few calls. I've been calling out for four hours of show. I leave the callers got to participate. I usually, one of the reasons why they put live your show is because we gave them voice here. Yeah. Why am I John Bubu? Not that other people will say they get begging or story, get to be playing with their own repetition, playing with other poor repetition. I don't know how you run out. Pro, or, or, or. Anyway, let me leave there. I won't dignify anybody here. All right, uh, Mo Ali, if you're still struggling, I'm taking call. Call Jesse, you want to take call off? Call off, call off, call off, call off, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed the, the, the senator. Yes, we do. The idea of a job for many is in position right now. But... If we look at Leisure Wuhani and his resignation intent, if he had decided or maybe he decided to, to resign right now, he found it too at stake because there is no public sector that will incorporate so easily with his position right now. And looking at what economy in Liberia is going down on a slow pace. So Leisure Wuhani has no decision right now to make except he sat down as a man and decided that they say I will make this decision if giving my family support, then we all will suffer it at the detriment of my integrity. So don't you let you really issue and something. And Senator Dela, I want to say thank you for your effort. I am from the Democratic Party. We stood up for you and we stood up and at the end of the day, you are not, you are not making us shame. You are there, you are standing up for the rights of the party. And looking at our division in the party is still spinning stream. I actually, actually want to say thank you because Musa Berenere intent is to destroy the party, and we believe that we can still hold Senator and still hold Council of Legacy, and we can fight and make our key positions in like this. Okay, let's end it there. Thank you. Hold on, the long way. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, uh, I, Thank you very much. No, you have to hold on small. Uh, I'm going to stay talking to you. Yeah. Yes. I want to speak on the issue of Senator Yombly and Comics. I think it's a political declare that he wants to do so he can divert and make Yombly look ugly. But thank God for the Senator for providing clarity. On the issue of the same people law, uh, and we are law, in law with Latvia, in law with Latvia. My brother, my name is Melvin M. Rabba from West Point. Also supported the law. Now, quite a few years, I'm from West Point. What the West Point people really want, we are not doing it. They see erosion, see. Bringing a lot of people every day. You say you love the people. You can't, you say you have something. I mean, you, gotta, you gotta be rapping, we got a lot of people in line, we got enough time yeah, to take calls. Okay, that's what they made known for the sea erosion, auto nanny, whatever, okay, benefit. The issue of the maritime way, the vision, what I would put there. This actually, the weapon don't need, but how to call it, you can't do anything. Okay, sir. You wear hard to get a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Move go ahead. Go ahead, Colo. Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure. My name is Hezekiah Opa, and I speak to you from Jamaica Road. Go ahead, yeah. Hezekiah. I want to allude to the point that Senator Dennis mentioned, I mean, sorry, or Senator Darrell did not mention when it comes to the issues of uh, the resignation or Len Yujinangui, right? I was there as well. I can recall, uh, Senator Dennis, I mean, sorry, Senator Darrell did not. If you can recall the last meeting that we had to come at the bite of uh, 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 then a U.S. school building that he had to come down. I can recall with the late General Sherry presided over the meeting, right? It was Ezra Akisai and Senator Dow Delon represented the Liberty Party that we discussed. And the meeting was disrupted. 
because of uh, uh, Akara Gray and that of uh, Molu. How be it? It is not an issue about that, right? I don't want to make reference to the issue. Be I'll fast with the you. issue. Pardon? Be fast yes. with the issue. Yes, be fast with the issue, yes. And, uh, people will say, uh, we, we are kind of disappointed with the governance in Liberia. Like the statement that, 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 came, that emanated from uh, uh, the, 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 the Minister of, of uh, Information is, 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 is denigrating to have said that, oh, yes, uh, 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 MJ I think that alone worry resignation. If you cannot, re I think for the sake of integrity, there's a need that you resign. And nobody should feel that, President, we are going for a second term. We understand people say Africa, we, we can go for one term, we can go for two term. And we may reference the issue of Uganda. Uh, Thank Zambia. you, Chief. Yeah. 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 Let, let's say other call term, on one term. You. So, President, we'll go for one term. One term, we'll give you one term. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Colo. Yeah, uh, good evening, Mo, and good evening to the panelists. Go ahead. Uh, this is Bobby Abu Meska called for District 6 as the Kokoro. Uh, let me first appreciate you guys this evening for the topic on the discussion. Oh, you, yeah, the problem with Mr. Rennie is so chaotic because if Mr. Rennie sees that he lost the job, and he sees them placing the presidency, then he said that he can maintain the job. It's like, because you are already, he already brought the president, brought us that everything that happened. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Yeah, they're taking four calls from my end, and that will be it. This is tier one. Hello. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. I'm talking. Call on the Call on the U.S. Go ahead. I think man left it long. All right, let me take this call. Yeah, go ahead. How are you? Fine. This is Ansu Bamba from New Georgia Estate. Go ahead, Ansu. Uh, I'm actually calling on the show this evening to re uh, to remind the senator about our census uh, money. We did the census and. <laughs> Almost seventy percent of us that did the census we completed. Uh -huh. as a supervisor, uh -huh. the census almost seventy percent of us that did the census in Mosquito yeah. completed. And as a supervisor, up to date, we have not received our full payment yet. And we got almost two hundred and sixty some more persons who did not receive their twenty five percent in their city fee up to date. And we are not seeing any sound that shows that we will receive our money before the Christmas or any time January. All right. So I want the senator to, to really see to look To look into it, yeah? Yeah. To look into that matter, right? Yes. All right, thank you. Because our CC is very big. Okay, thank you. Seriously, while the president was giving put $20 to go meet into the airport, they should have used that money to pay our census money. Instead of them giving put $20 to go meet him. All right, chief. Thank you. I'm taking my last caller for the night. Go ahead, caller. I'm UJ. I'm UJ Utah from the Kiel of Grand Paso County. You can't miss all of them. Go ahead. Yeah, the statement that says, says that nobody can have Lauren the Liberty Party is getting coming to be vice president. That statement from the devil of the devil. In fact, look. That statement meant to honor man the decent and cordial working relationships like man the political institution that is the party, etc. So the new clear law is hundred percent qualified. She has the experience, she has the pedigree, she has the number, she has the commitment. The Liberty Party is not putting on standard bearer up because we lost our vision bearer, we lost our you know, our counselor. That is why. But that doesn't mean the Liberty Party cannot put on any presidential candidate. The Liberty Party is protected. So, I mean, that's the meant to divide. Thank the you, Eugene. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. 
Any other person you call on. Pia, go ahead now. Freedom. Pia, you, you muted. Somebody call and then he want to be listening to himself and I'm telling you, you can listen to yourself and he, he, he hangs, he hangs up. Okay, let me take a call from Liberia. Send the person here, America, they're joking with us. DJ Lomel, go ahead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know that, you know that Mo Ali refused to take DJ Lomel call, so the man's still finding way. Yeah, go ahead, DJ Lomel. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable PI, and thank you to Honorable Dillon. I call him Mr. Wisdom. This is DJ Lomel calling from Cowell. Let me say thank you, uh, Honorable Dillon. You said it all. Look, you are. God ear to hear, you will hear. You are God eyes to see, you will see. Our country now will only pray God for 2023 because we are already being left in the wilderness. Look, water and sword, eight months now, we all are done. My late brother worked over there, he are not getting a damn, and he said he was going to get one more. So I recall to now, every one of them has not getting the one more. But still, the president sees reasons to print t shirts and caps to bring it to this country and pay people to go and meet it. What kind of president is this that just loves itself, that don't love the library people? But we let you really, you know, when you saw that. The woman back at the last time I told you, I said, What you did, it will fall right on your lap and your father did it. Say, Where is going over you? Why are going over you for you to be going this kind of far? Look, let you resign from this government. If you can find your way, go back to America, go back where you did to this country. But insulting that woman that had nothing to do with you, but you mean to insult him that God beating you so. May God bless our country and save our state. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the program tonight. Okay. All right, DJ Lover. Who let who let Omae? He gone. I want to know who who let you who insulted. Just a one. Let you who let you have record before. I don't not to my knowledge. No, he but the way he's telling the man to go back to America. Because he don't like it. Just a group. We are staying more. I wanted to. I wanted to tell DJ Lover, and I know he's listening. They make it. Go ahead, call him. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hello. Is it uh? Yeah. There's a class reloader. Yeah, good, very good. Okay, my name is Daniel Bimba, and I'm calling from Pennsylvania, showering you. Okay. The reason for is first of all to say thank you to you guys for the cool work you are doing for the Latin people. But I have power and a pain to make a new balance. As you well know, most of our people in the country don't speak English, and they don't understand it either. So I'm really appealing to you guys to create a seat in our classroom for our indigenous people that you bring in once in a while when they start to speak to their people and promote GMB and also other important issues to explain to their people, especially in the rural area. Of course, there's so right, right, right. right. you, you, you want us to start with you? Oh, I can, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. Okay. I can speak back very well. I can do that. No, but so can. No, but so can. No, but so can. Okay, money, money, no more. When you want it, sure, I will. Mon, damn, I get dirty. I get you. Okay, my own. I'm a genie. Oh, I'm a bazooka. I'm a bazooka. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Mr. How are you guys doing today? We okay. Quick clip. We we don't have much time, so be fine. I know we don't. I know we don't have much time. Well, I just want to touch on uh, Liberia's point that on a couple of things that when the senator started a conversation with uh, Louis Brown. Don't do a couple of things. Just do ledger who went talk about one of the things the senator talked about. We got a couple of things. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but I didn't talk about Louis Brown. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I did. Yeah, 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 I did. Oh, yeah, you said something about Louis Brown. Yeah, that yeah. you came to me. But right. the senator said that. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Louis Brown went to his office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sat with him and met with him to discuss about the riot I just that the, the fake stuff that they just, that they just came away on the 17th. The first thing, first thing is that some of us are in the diaspora that are supporting the CPP. We think that these guys that are going to come in should not be coming to circle with you guys to discuss. Because the first thing first, they, 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 I call him, Kumis already did it. He did it there already. If you guys start to shadow and sit with he call her, we with people on this end, we always think that there is something going on in the background. 
You cannot trust people in Liberia. Then that's number one. That's reality. That's number one. So, I'm um, saying you have to be very careful in setting. I, I mean, I don't see the reason why you guys do want to sit with Pumi and his team. I don't want to see that. Pumi already did a dead work. He should be gone by now. Okay, so for you, they no. will not talk to them yeah. at all. They will not sit with them. If these people wanted to sit with the CPP, you are not going to break away from the CPP. That's number one. You're not going to deal with the documentation. That's number two. So what the answer coming to you? To sit on your head? It's just that you, you're trying to put your hand back in the lion mouth. Okay, the sir. Lion, the same that you felt, then you go back to him again. Okay, sir. That's okay. what you're trying to do. Okay, sir. Then now with letter who? Let you who already from day one, you are sound and seasoned person, a sound man, and you know for the way that the job that you accepted when you came in the station, for the press, the, the, the press young program that you had, I think therefore last, when you were the keynote speaker, I told you, I said, brother, <laughs> the thing you put your hand in, it's a mess. It's a mess. So, in a way, he knew that there would be a disgrace that would come after him. Not because you're suffering, so you should try to kill yourself because you're suffering. Let's say, well, you're not suffering. You're not suffering like that before you receive that job. Your repetition in life matters. Okay, you sir. do all of this, so your repetition matters. Okay, thank you, thank you. Let me take that guy because he went from London or somewhere. I don't want to mix him. Call out, I think you're calling from Canada or UK or wherever. Yes, I'm calling from Sweden. No, oh, Sweden, okay. Uh, so this is the question. This is it. Make your, uh, make your point. Call to add my voice to the many persons who have called to congratulate you guys and appreciate you for the effort you made every day or three times a week to have the authoritative view boosting Liberia's hair on your platform. And this is a medium I think we try to use regularly to see how we are getting connected to our country on a daily basis. Uh, for the discussion, for me, there have been one category of people that have made a decision in the past not to support in politics, not to support in politics in Liberia, and that group of people has been people who have supported the war in our country for the 14 years, and the next group of people whom. I'm considering to add to that list are those who are very well educated, was they were aware of the risks and the detrimental effect of making George Real president and they stood by him and supported him to be president. These are people who I'm considering adding to that list of people who are done, I will not support in politics. And so I do not feel sorry for Legend Winnie because I feel he's well knowledgeable, they knew the risks of their action, and they took on to taking those risks because their self benefits were placed against or above the interests of the country. So when I sometimes see how George Weir is playing some of them around, it becomes beneficial to me because I feel that. This is a lesson that they should have seen far ahead of today before getting themselves into it. So as we gear up towards the 2023, I just want to add that in as much as some of them will be crying around, we did not to feel sorry for them. We need to just put our acts together and see how we can mend our forces to be able to fight. Because one thing I do know is the category of people that are dominant in the church we are at the church are people who do not see the positions that they have had now as positions who they would have afforded to have under enormous circumstances. So for these people to relinquish power in 2020, it will not be an ordinary thing. So the efforts that we need is a, a collaborative effort that Senator Dillon said, yes, we and the opposition needs to be open to each other. But we need to also be frank to the open competition that we had about the strength and weaknesses of everyone and see how we can make them to be able to get the 2023 
elections, I call it won by the opposition, and then we start to see our country come back on the right trajectory. Okay, let, let's so end it. Now, let's end let it there. these government officials who feed the page of the judge we are, I call it, in FA2, feed it, and then they will get to know that the risk of going for a very risky person in politics is is is, is such a matter to even you as a person in the country at the okay, last. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Steven, that's it. Let's end it. Yeah, yeah, guys. Um, it's almost four hours. We gotta we gotta wrap up here. Um, um, Ali, like, I'll start with you, Ali. So uh, the longer you talk, I have much time. You, you stay here. <laughs> so they are closing the door. How much time you talk? So guys, uh, it's up to you that for us to leave. It'll be dependent on how much time you talk. So. Uh, it's been a wonderful show. Let me begin with Ali. Ali, uh, then uh, uh, Pastor Mo, George, Pia, the Senator, saying he joined us last will take us home. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I think the show was very great tonight, and we have discussed the Ministry of Information, the Minister of Information, sufficiently. And my closing will be. Oh. Just to remind the people of Liberia that President we are. coming from? From Pia, I think from Pia. Oh, because we don't know most situation. Ah, oh, Dilon, that people here. So, um, to remind the people that there is no communicate between the government of Liberia and that of Qatar to tell us if uh, they have committed $100 million. I mean, we will be happy for it because we want to see the Lufa roof fix. We know what he brought, that one goal from the World Cup, a teacher signed by his uh, friend John Terry and 50 metric ton of sugar panel. That was President We Are Broad. I will remind like brand people every day 50 metric ton of sugar palm oil. The poor thing eating it, they divide it to the moss around here. He bring nothing else. Thank you. And a selfie with President Biden from the US. They printed it on a big banner everywhere. They were throwing it all over the place. We have become a country of mediocrity where the president takes selfie with President Biden and it is an achievement. They print it all over. Thank you. Good night. And I brought a big billboard and put it on Broad Street with that picture. Unless you want to want like Paul E. And uh, Pastor Mo. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a great show. Um, let me just crack a joke before we... It's not a joke, but it's a real story that have to do with the money coming from, from, from the international community and there is no money. But it is about one of our older fellow in our community in Logintown. Uh, they were building... The Kelly Church at that time. I don't know if many of you heard about Alexander Pratt. He used to work with the with the information ministry. He was a he was a photographer. So they were having the, the fundraising program for the for the Kelly, no, not the Kelly Church, the Kelly Hospital uh, uh, in Lokitown. So everybody went to the fundraising program and Mr. Pratt went and and he donated 50 he pled 50 bags of cement and he said that can be picked up first thing Monday morning. Monday morning, Mr. Pratt was in bed and uh and uh and uh and the auto ball from from the Kelly Church went to Mr. Pratt to go and pick up the uh 50 bags of of cement. That somebody got something home that were pledged to the Kelly Church. So the boy rang at the door, uh, Mr. Pratt, I came to collect, the, the father sent me to collect the 50 bags of cement. And Mr. Pratt said this, he said, but my son, everybody make their big, big muff. I make my own a big muff, so you come in after me now. He said, no, no, my son, I don't have the 50 bags of cement. I was only making my own a big muff. So, you know, it, <laughs> so, so, so it that tell us that uh, 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 everybody received something yeah. from, from, from the international community. Community, so our own father too have to come and say, but yeah, can't, can't last it so, so many. Yeah, so we're waiting to see. All in all, we know in Liberia when we say empty belly can stand, we know the implication. It means a lot. It means that Honorable Ledger, who reigned 
is not taking pay as we think he may be taking pay and i think there's so much going on but uh it is not uh, 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 uh this is just alarming because we don't know what all is going on in our ministry and agency we hope that uh, uh, uh some of you that work with those ministry and agency you will be able to call us but don't call your name and let us know exactly what is unfolding in those ministry and those agency so we can be able to to discuss it online because so many things is going on so far i say thank you very much it has been a great show thank you thank you thank you pastor Mark george uh, i want to thank senator Dillon for 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 coming in and making his low contribution and providing clarification uh you know as tough as it is steven but it's good to be here pr uh this is a fight that we all commit ourselves to and we have to keep it pushing having said that i want to say to all of you liberians at home you made a decision in 2017 today you can see for yourself what your life has become for me i've been very clear on the records 12 years my party was in power never went to liberia it's not to say i'm breaking but this government has created a condition people who we knew that were independent that like were full, that like could help others. Some of them, when they reach out to people I know, that is what breaks me down, Stephen. Some days I sit and you know, now technically I'll leave from class, we know that go to the drive. What do I, what is the plan? Do I really need a job in Labrador to survive? Are you, coming to, are you coming to do just that? You're coming to go on a drive? Yes, this is my point. Do I need a job in Labrador? Do I hear my party or in power? You don't see me in Labrador? I don't need to. This is not to break. But I have a commitment to those brothers and sisters of mine, friends of mine, that I listen to their stories every day. Those who started projects, some of them now they have to sell their unfinished buildings. Those who bought cars that were able to take their family, they could go on vacation, they are struggling. This is the life we are living now. We do not have a functioning government, folks. I say this to say, if you think the country is hard right now, wait, let the world say, you know what? The Liberian people love suffering. We told you in 2020, we told you in 2018. We, 2018, I used to be very clear. I said the country was getting ready to start getting hard. That used to be my statement. And people say, oh, George, the country hard. I said, no, the country is not hard. I said the country will get hard. And when I predicted the country was going to get harder than it was in 2018, I didn't know there was going to be COVID. But now, George Weah is lying on COVID. Let's be real here. Before COVID, the economy of the, the library economy was in the toilet, according to Senator Delon voice. So this economy was not growing above 5% steady. That COVID made it to be in a, in a decline. It failed, my brothers and sisters. There is a challenge against us. And I want to say for the very first time, you people know I don't really talk Liberty Party business, but I want to thank the Liberty Party leadership. And I want to say this about Senator Lawrence. I hear people sometimes talk about running mates, and I, I get these calls all the time. But I, like Delon said, I understand where it was coming from. Uh, these little tactics here and there. And what's funny about it is that people with no idea with national politics that they are the ones talking about things like that. I think Senator Lawrence has proven, uh, and I believe in her judgment, what she has gone through, what she has taken over the past 12 months, I am confident that nothing will sway her. And to you Liberians, we have a ticket. And I tell you any given day, I do sales for a living. We can sell any tickets, TV. We will be ready to sell the ticket once the ticket is announced and confirmed. I want to thank you people for being here. Please, please, the class reloaded should be your home. 
these pro government platforms exactly to go with, Chinese, with Chinese viewers the work up has ended their viewers have left the work up their back you say you say we're gonna have your challenge viewer yeah, you know, you know, problem, man. Oh, <laughs> I hear you cool. Oh, I just want to. You know, me, yeah, Steven, they drive don't talk numbers. We don't care about that for you. No. But I'm telling you, you, the substance of the conversation should drive you. That is what should attract you. But instead, you people just want to be there. That is the problem with Liberia. You want to belong. Because you see 8,000, you say you want to be in the 8,000. Just so you can say you were there. There is nothing wrong sometimes with standing outside once it is the right thing. A show like the class reloaded, your alarm should be set. That this time, Stevie, when he's not on, no, Stevie, I'll tell you. Right now, they're texting me. My man, no show you late. This is what you should do. The class reloaded. Look at the people that come here. Look at their output. Look at their deliberation. Who informs you on gossip? Think about it, folks. The things you're listening to give us reason to continue to fight. People with no experience in anything want to talk about things they don't know. Talking about, yeah, the other time, you know, I heard, uh, if you said that, if you know, if you know. This is a serious time, folks. I'm challenging you people. You need to be here. We'll do our part to always be here. Please, I want to thank you, people. Continue to support this program. Continue to show up. Steven is not getting paid. You look at PR, former press secretary to a president, to be sitting here every day to speak to national issue. That man has accomplished. He has the educational credential. But yet then he's here every day committed to you guys. Sometimes I, I'm at work, I'm listening to the show. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with these librarian people? You won't be listening to gossip. Oh, they said the other minister, the other day, she was that. Uh, oh, yeah, this and that. Oh, they said they don't want to send you the other day. No, they don't care. Hey, me. Are you serious, folks? But we're not entering next year the same way. Please, you've got to set this standard for yourself. You have to. And I'm challenging you people. Forget about the draft. The class reloaded is listened to all over in Liberia. So it should be the number one show. Exactly. Please, I'm challenging you folks. Make this place your home. Let this take precedent over everything. Gentlemen, thank you guys. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Thank I'll you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Two hours is a lot. So before I start. Please, George, you didn't go. I want to say something right here. George, George. After Pia. After no, go ahead. Because, because he has to go. So, you no, can come back. Yeah. No, but Pia, you can be there 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm be no, here. but the thing, I want, the thing I want to say, George, finish. George, why are you both seriously being? If I had a background, I would say I don't need to be here. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. 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 Hold you see their suffering faces. It is to reflect on the. Decision. Okay, Charlie. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> you got to have so, for the stadium. Four hours. Wow. Four hours. It's a lot. Right now, I'm supposed to run to one shopping mall here because my daughter just came live in the town and said the teacher said they want to carry pajama. You know, that Christmas season, they got to carry pajama to school tomorrow. So I will have to jump from here and go to that mall and buy with all the headache and stress we're going through. Let me let me let me just de-stress your small before I say my one or two things and just close the show. Uh,
Lionel Messi has conquered his final peak. Lionel Messi has shaken hands with paradise. The little boy from Rosario Santa Fe has just pitched up in heaven. <laughs> Be that Druid. The, the little boy from, you know where? Rosario Santa Fe. Yeah, don't want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pitch into heaven. Into heaven. The best book commentator ever to have existed on planet Earth. And I like, I love that description. When the whistle was blown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mercy has been synthetic. <laughs> Anyway, guys, just to de stress a little bit that I just brought it, but we wait. So we've been here for long, but let me just yeah. say this. Yeah, let me just say this. When the folks ran around with the uh, MIDI issue, wherever I sat, there was one thing I said to myself. Mm -hmm. I said, I was born onto a woman. My father was a man who had 22 children. Hmm. Majority girls. I have four myself. Only one, a boy, the rest, girls. <laughs> so my spot for sympathizing with women is very strong. I have in view looking at the way Mr. Cummings and his people fought and try as best as they could to destroy Nyobli Kangalari. <laughs> Never have I seen something so well calculated to just work towards destroying somebody. Politics is also a game of respect. There's no way that when Bronskin was alive, he will be wanting to do something at the Unity Party headquarters, and he said to help with Ambassador Bwaka, or Ellen Johnson said it then, who was a standard bearer. Because Wilma Pay is asking him to go there. And he will go there not giving a heck about what Ellen Johnson said he feels. All of these things were in due at Nyobli, at the hands of Cummings, aided by most ability and others. And so, if there was ever a time where what was being promulgated by Spoon and those who were spreading the news was to be a fat, I would have felt sorry for Nyobli because then it means she didn't learn a lesson from what she went through. Then it means she didn't value herself. Then it meant that she was prepared to even lead herself to the slaughterhouse, to be slaughtered. Because stress and the, all the tension we pass through from the things we do, naturally by themselves, can kill you. If Nyombly wasn't strong, what she passed through at the hands of Cummings, and his people who would have been sitting one day, yeah, yeah, that she fell all in Mabutu Nipa. And recovery would be impossible. She stood that test of time. I want to believe she valued herself. And it's not going to be what people think she is to give herself up to the wolves who sought to destroy her in the first place. So I just want to encourage her. I know she understands this game. She's been around. I know that propaganda will not shake her. I purposely asked her that question when she was on this show. Some people think you're here because you want to be vice president. Is that it? And she was on this show and said, what I need is the betterment of our country. And the way we get it is a leader who we can trust, who we can rally around. She said, that's it for me. Beyond the show, we had a private conversation. One time she came to the States and we talked. And she didn't care as to who Joseph Walker would pick. In fact, I said something to her in private, which I would not say the detail, but I can just say it here. 
I did say to her a certain name that if this person is chosen as a running mate, you know the party is my party, but I'm out. I will not support the candidate. But I will not support the ticket. She was the one telling me that we should detach from that kind of conclusion. That if Waka is that symbol that we're looking up to for leadership, we should trust him and we should trust his judgment, trust everything that he wants to do. And even if the one he chooses is somebody that we disagree with, I will believe in him to make us stand with that ticket. She told me that that's a private conversation between us. So I don't see how somebody who is so fitted in her belief that Bwaka is the man for the hour or of the hour would do what people accusing her to. Is the seeing light and running beyond darkness. So I just want to say to her, keep strong. And to the people who are doing that, keep taking all the mistakes. Keep making all these mistakes. Keep harming yourselves more. Keep doing harm to yourself and you think you're harming others. Time. And only time will tell. Thank you. It's been a good show. Thank you, Pia. Thank you. Senator, take us home, please. <clears throat> Thank you. In a VOA interview granted uh, to Senator Lawrence, as political leader of the Labour Party, this is what she said. I'm the standard bearer of the second most political, uh, popular party in the CPP. And going forward, as per our negotiation, I think we will produce a running mate to whoever wins as CPP standard bearer. I'm talking about the full party CPP, not communist PP. What I just said is not what nobody said. I'm trying to clarify which CPP I'm talking about. Let me so let me quote all again. Mm -hmm. I'm the standard bearer of the second most popular party in the CPP. And going forward, as per our negotiation, I think we will produce a running mate to whoever wins a CPP standard bearer. When Jim Bode asked her, this is what she said. The question was, who do you support? Who does the Labour, Labour Day Party support? And she said, Labour Day Party as an institution will decide. The political leader of the Liberty Party, Stan Ayombi Kanga Lawrence, honored the original four party CPP granted, mm -hmm. was granted an interview by VOA, Jane Porter. Those were her remarks. She has never parted company with those comments. Nyombi has always wanted the Liberty Party as an institution to decide together. Is that about her? This never been about me. Nobody never gave MOU to anybody to make her vice president. Nobody never shared job with anybody to make her vice president. The information is not true that Nobody has been meeting of late with Mr. Cummins at the urging of Mr. Musa Billeted. It is an imagination. It is a calculated plot put together to honor the existing partnership with Joseph Walker and the UP. It is a plot in furtherance of the grand scheme of things to disintegrate the CPP using the hand, I don't knowing or unknowingly of Mr. Cummins and his folks on the spoon talk for 20 months, believing, breaking Bwaka, undermining Nyombli, and destroying Darius Dillon, saying anything about Benny Nayure who make Ellis Cummins president or viable. 
They succeeded somehow in having the former original CPP disintegrated today. They are now on Ellis Cummings and they have decimated him, even though he did to himself already. So the last straw is let's not put a sea of distrust and let's put a wedge with Waka Camp because it is solid, it is steady, it is firm, and it is where the entire country believes can rescue this country. Let's now go and hide that camp so that George Weah can have an easy second term. Trust me, it won't work. We'll do smart for that. We need it already. The political leader of our party has not had any discussion with Mr. Cummings. If or when there's a need for the sake of the country for us to have a discussion, the public will be made aware before and after the discussions to know what we discussed. So we know the game, we know the plan. It won't work. I want to say thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas to our listeners, whom and abroad, with best wishes of a happy, prosperous new year to come. To the fellow who called from Legends, the legislature is on break. We will return the second Monday in January. So now what we can do as a legislative body, but what I can do as a senator is to place a call with the authority at Legends to find out what's happening because we don't want to enter into the new year with all of the Legends Wahala and I can also inform the public that on Sunday, I was enumerated. Uh, the ladies came to count me and my household. And what was interesting, the entire ladies administration came, led by the head of ladies, <laughs> Laurie George, Dr. Sidi, <laughs> the technical team, they all came to enumerate me and my household. Uh, and I laughed, I said, the entire Legis administration came to enumerate me because they know the process is already practically closed and they know what I'm going to do at the Senate and how I'm going to take that result. So they came to enumerate me and I asked what are they enumerating me and my entire community and other places across the county and the country. And he said they were doing a final map of exercise. So I can report to the public, it's fair enough when I was not enumerated, uh, I learned about it, including about five days ago, that they have come. It is fair to inform the public. Tomorrow I will put up the photos of the latest folks at my house. Mm -hmm. led by the director general himself and the technical arm <laughs> to say, uh, you can't go on that floor again and say, people will not come there because you said we can't tell you. <laughs> and you know, I laughed. <laughs> but I want to wish, uh, 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 Stephen, you just don't know how much we appreciate you and PI and Mo Ali. Um, I know sometimes you guys joke me. Yeah, I'm the principal in this class. I can come in or on at your origin at any time. And I'm not regular now because I don't want to be regular. You made me senator. You gave me a lot of activities, Stephen. The people of this country, people can ask, Senator, why are you not on the show? You just don't know. You come home sometimes, you're overly big or be tired. But when it's crucial, it's important, we come on. Uh, a lot of things go on behind the scene to get the class reloaded. You know, when I was campaigning, a lot of people will say, Senator, they don't increase your security. You need more men behind you. 
<laughs> so what what some people with a good intentioned advice what some people wouldn't consider was the logistical aspect yeah. the more men you employ behind you the more is the payroll increases the payroll. Mm -hmm. apart from that if you have four persons and you have to include or add another two or three that means you got to get another vehicle and, and you know all those logistical things uh, uh um, challenges so when people say you get additional radios, good. You get some people. You get more people who can't speak in the local vernacular. You employ people, good. This is a free service we run over here. The class B loader was pressed as a result of our brainstorming in the back to give the country a viable alternative to listen to something more concrete, more reliable, more credible. So that you can't keep going to bed angry because you listen to something that you didn't like or were making you angry, but you didn't have the the how you call it restraint to just turn that radio off on something that will anger you. We brought up on the cloud reloaded to give you what you are getting today. Imagine if the cloud reloaded was not on. I the rumor about Nyombli, the lie, not rumor, the lie about Nyombli meeting with comments in the last few days who have grown legs. Today, they didn't, say about, they didn't talk about it because everybody thinks reading really into it is not true. So we want to thank you, Steve, Pastor Moore, you guys up in America, your basic schedule. We know the American society, time is of essence. Pia, Mo Ali, those of us here, we want to encourage our collinear crowd. We'll find another female as well. We want to encourage Daniel Sano and, and, and Tony Klatume to be more regular. So that and into next year, it will be politics. And trust and trust me. next week. Yeah, yeah, beginning next week. Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, next week. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, and I'm gonna wear my political jacket. I'm gonna take it to Josh Weir though. I, I don't bother myself about Sir Joseph and 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 and, and, and the gray, the Akara Gray and the rest of the four soldiers behind George Weir. John Weir is my target to remove him from the mansion democratically. I have the painful medicine for CDC in this country. Grace by God and blessed by all of you together. It is this striking voice, the authority of our voice, to get them out of the mansion for which CDC will do anything to honor my us. I can understand that. It is this voice that some members of the opposition who believe and thought that once Dylan is not leaning toward our end, we got to join CDC to gang up to diminish his voice. But it didn't work because we didn't give them the opportunity. We didn't feed them with the meat. They were looking for retirement law that was existing since 2003 to attach my signature to it. They, they were looking for anything to make Dylan look like he has failed the people so his voice would not matter in 2023. But God has always been faithful because we have surrounded. We are allowing to order our steps, even in our email error and uh, shortcomings along the way. We refuse to give them the rare meat. And when, when God guards you and take you out of the lion den, don't go in the lion den without God's guidance. People try to do everything to break us, to break numbly. It didn't work. Now we see laser, we think on the snake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Salida. <clears throat>
So I'm going to say thank you to, to Pastor Mo and uh, Pia who, who had joined us, uh, who left us, um, George, Tualu, and uh, Mo Ali, and everybody who called in and all those who listened to us via radio. <clears throat> My voice is getting a little fainted. Um, the weather has changed here. So let me say <clears throat> thanks to Bourgeois Radio FM 98.1 in Montserrado, um, Premier FM 98.1 in uh, Banga Bong County, Radio Tupa FM 89.1 in Grand Bassa, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 in Vojima Lofa County, Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5 in Magibi, and Voice of Compa 106.5 all the way there in uh, Compa City in Lima County. It's been a wonderful time. I would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and uh, good tidings of the season. And may the season bring you best wishes and Godspeed as you go through the ending stages of the year and throughout the new year. So um, Friday, we will be back. Hopefully Friday, we'll keep it a little relaxing. Maybe people can just call and just wish their family um, yeah. you know, a Merry Christmas, you know, a little. Yeah. Yeah. You just let people call and wish their relatives and friends and loved ones a uh, happy, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So it's, it's been a blessing being here. It's been a fun time, four hours, 25 minutes, having uh, talking politics, speaking to our people. And thank you, Senator, for also joining us. So apart from the call-off, um, there are some very informative comments in the comment session. We will start to read them along yeah. the way. I'm, a, yeah. I'm, I'm suggesting that we give some consideration yeah, to, especially yeah, once to, they are in line with the discussions. Yeah, so we'll have Ali yeah. to be doing that, especially when he's right, uh, right, right. Uh, 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 when he's on. So you know, once again, it's been a wonderful time. Um, I've been your host, uh, Stephen Johnson. Um, wrapping this up for my thank you, Pastor Mo, thank you, Senator, and I wish you all a wonderful rest of the evening. God bless you all. Bye bye. Call it off. Call it off. It's all in the game. It's all in the game.